Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithm. It's all about understanding. A very warm good morning to one and all present here. Fatima Mata National College is the only autonomous college in Kollam district of Kerala. It is one of the premier educational institution run by the Catholic Diocese of Kollam. The institution was founded in 1951 by His Excellency Right Reverend Bishop Dr M Fernandez, the first native bishop of Kollam. Fatima was granted autonomy by UGC in 2014. The Department of Mathematics was established in the year 1952 with the UG courses and it was upgraded into a PG department in 1999. The dedicated and selfless service rendered by the well defined faculty has helped the department to maintain a high standard of excellence in teaching. The department also take pride in its alumni who hold prestigious position in various fields. It's an immense pleasure to start the auspicious occasion by heartily welcoming everyone on behalf of our department and college to this international conference on algebra and discrete mathematics 2022. When you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. Otherwise, your knowledge is of meager and unsatisfactory kind. Every year on March 14, the world celebrate Pi Day to recognize the constant Pi. Pi Day is celebrated on March 14 since 3, 1 and 4 are the first three significant digits of Pi. Today, March 14 is the most suitable day to start the conference as we are celebrating International Pi Day today. Prayer work wonders. Prayer should spring from the heart. Thinking of a supreme power beyond all human inadequacies is a kind of auto suggestion. Now, let's welcome Anugraha of Second DC Mathematics for the prayer song. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. My seed of sound is a falling, but for the showers we plead. But for the showers we plead. But for the shadows we see. Now I invite Dr. Roshni Ma'am for the welcome speech. Good morning, Ananda. It is my pleasure to welcome the all the participants today for the international conference on algebra and discrete mathematics. conducted by department of mathematics fatima mother national college kollam this is the first conference conducted by our department on a digital platform in live with social distancing norm due to covid-19 pandemic the theme of this two day international conference is to develop a deep research attitude and motivation on the area of algebra and discrete mathematics we are proud to announce that this conference is being conducted along with the cooperation of different reputed persons across the world this is the wonderful opportunity to generate creative ideas and innovative works related with these selected areas to this meeting first i welcome our head of the department who give the presidential address ms ann vargis and she takes lot of effort to organize this program in this best dear ms i welcome you to this program this program is inaugurated by dr jojo sir he is uh, our principal he give full support and courage every time to create a platform like this dear sir you are welcome to this program thank you miss then i welcome reverend father dr abhilash gregory who give the benedictory address to this program dear father i welcome you to this program our manager also 
he is our manager also then i welcome eminent speaker and a guest from all over the country from different walks of life you have come here to share this their knowledge and vast experience with this community i also welcome all colleagues delegates students research scholars and every one joining here with great love thank you Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invite Anne Vargis, ma'am, HOD, Department of Mathematics, for the presidential address. A warm good morning to one and all. Respected Principal Professor Jojo Sir, Manager Reverend Dr. Abhilash Gurgade, other dignitaries and their participants. Today is a joyous occasion for the Department of Mathematics of Fatima Mata National College for conducting this international conference. in conjunction with the platinum jubilee celebrations of the college the department has chosen today and tomorrow for this conference as today is the day to celebrate the mathematical constant pi the conference mainly focuses on algebra and discrete mathematics there are many research works going on in these fields many concepts and methodology in algebra are being used in many areas of mathematics and other sciences for example it is used in the algebraic topology to solve topological and geometrical problems using algebraic objects grigory perelman solved the point care conjecture using the tools of modern algebra and other modern mathematical concepts algebraic number theory provides important tools to solve many problems in mathematics for example andrew weiss proved fermat's last theorem by using algebraic number theory along with other theories Discrete mathematics mainly deals with discrete structures which are abstract mathematical structures used to represent discrete objects and relationships between these objects some examples are permutations relations graphs trees and finite state machines discrete mathematics has applications in almost every area of study like computer science data networking artificial intelligence internet physics chemistry biology linguistics social sciences geography and business modeling with discrete mathematics is an important problem solving skill special thank you to dr a r rajan sir the director the state institute of encyclopedic publications kerala dr r kala ma'am professor and head department of mathematics ms university dr telvina santani sir lecturer kingston university london international studies center Dr Ambli A A Ma'am Cochin University of Science and Technology Dr Asha Sunil Kumar Ma'am School of Engineering and Information Technology Manipal Academy of Higher Education Dubai for accepting our invitation wholeheartedly and presenting in this conference in spite of their busy schedule also special thanks to professor G Suresh Singh sir University of Kerala Prakash sir and Archana Ma'am for their scholastic support and for chairing the paper presentation sessions best paper presentation award will be given in both categories hope that everyone will benefit from this conference thank you thank you ma'am now it's my pleasure to invite our beloved principal dr jojo pj sir to officially inaugurate our program thank you good morning one and all i hope i am audible yes sir thank you i'm extremely happy to see that the department of mathematics is organizing a conference on algebra and discrete mathematics icadm 2022 in an extremely befitting manner uh, i think this is the as uh, the the um, uh, welcome speaker told this is the first conference that the mathematics department is organizing in connection with the 70th year of our college uh, we have a long list of esteemed uh, and eminent speakers right from dr a r rajan 
director the state institute of encyclopedic publications to antrim dr r kala professor and head department of mathematics ms university tamil nadu dr ampli ambak asokan assistant professor to sat kochin and most importantly our beloved and former head of the department of uh, mathematics dr telvin asanchini who is now in kingston university london in international study center and dr asha sunil kumar from the school of engineering and it manipal academy of higher education dubai i must congratulate uh, dr ann and uh, the the uh, associate team for organizing such a beautiful uh, seminar uh, with a very long row of good speak eminent speakers all around the uh, from all around the world in fact uh, as i understand i love mathematics actually mathematics is a language of god linear algebra is an ocean tremend having tremendous potential in science uh and miss mentioned the some of the good applications of uh, linear algebra and in fact modern day applications of linear algebra ranges from the use in search engines to quantum computing google uses the ranking which page should be shown up first whenever you need to have a random walk in the network you need a bit of linear algebra most widely used applications of linear algebra is definitely optimization and the most widely used kind of optimization is linear programming you can optimize budgets your diet and your routine works using linear programming error correction codes is another realm in which algebra is being widely used signal analysis in physics the field of signal analysis gives one massively used tools for encoding analyzing and manipulating signals that can be audio images video or thinking like uh, things like x rays and light refractions through crystals pretty much all graphics innovation since computers have existed have come from video gaming and movies the central part of the graphics is projecting a three dimensional scene onto a two dimensional screen projection is already a linear map on top of that rotations scaling and perspective are all implemented and analyzed properly using linear algebra facial recognition is another use of linear algebra the cool method for doing automated facial recognition is linear algebra technique called principal component analysis predictions quantum computing etc are most widely used tools in which linear algebra has a major role discrete mathematics at the same time deals with the study of mathematical structures it deals with objects that can have distinct separate values it is also called decision mathematics or finite mathematics it is a study of mathematical structures that are fundamentally discrete in nature and it does not require the notion of continuity i hope this today conference will enlighten our students researchers and faculty of the department of mathematics of our college with this auspicious occasion with the permission of all dignitaries including our manager reverend dr abhilash grigari i declare that this two day conference algebra and discrete mathematics ica dm 2021 open thank you thank you very much
Now, I would like to invite Reverend Dr. Abhilash Grigari, the manager of Fatima Mada National College for the benedictory address. Good morning to all. Even though we are not mathematicians, we use Max. We are not experts in algebra and we use numbers and variables every day. We are not specialists on algorithms. However, we do solve problems and make correct calculations every day. This means that Max is indispensable for us. From pencil to atomic missiles, from kitchen to cabinet, from poetry to physics, we use Max. Max offers precision as well as possibilities and probabilities. Max can contribute to humanity. Max can make our humanity better. This statement is not a mere theoretical inference, but a historical reality. I would like to point to the example of Florence Nightingale. She is best remembered for her works as a nurse during the war and her contribution towards the reform of the sanitary conditions in the hospitals. However, what is less well known about her is her love of mathematics, especially statistics. Florence Nightingale's mathematical talents helped her transform the practice of nursing. She made a great impact, not only in the field of nursing, but also in the field of mathematics. So let's not confine Max only to our classrooms and only in our notebooks. Let us take it out of our notebooks, out of our classrooms, and apply it in our daily life. And we can certainly contribute to humanity. I hope this webinar not only enhances us with some intellectual concepts, but also enriches our heart to love others to work for peace and to heal the world. I take this opportunity to thank and congratulate all who have worked hard to make this webinar a reality. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Anil Kumar sir for a word of thanks. A warm and graceful morning to everyone. It's my great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion. It's my pleasure to thank our beloved manager, Reverend Father Dr. Abhilash Grigari, for his words of encouragement and blessings. His able guidance has uh, always encouraged us. You mentioned the importance of mathematics in the day-to-day -day life. On the behalf of a uh, mass department of uh, Fatima Mada National College, I ex express the most sincere thanks to our manager. Thank you. Thank you. I extend my heartfelt thanks to our respected principal, Professor Dr. Jojo P. Desar, for his enormous support and guidance for this conference and also for encouraging us to achieve many endeavors. You also mentioned very much research aspects in pure mathematics. Thank you, sir, for your great support. Thank you, sir. It's a special mention to our beloved HRD, Dr. Anwargis for being the catalyst that stimulated us to do our best. With a deep sense of uh, appreciation, I thank our HOD for your great support. An event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling months ago. It requires planning and the bird's eye for detail. We have been fortunate enough to backed by a team of very proactive and uh, dedicated staff. Thank you, my dear faculty members. 
last but not least i thank my dear students for enthusiastically arranging this function without you this function would not be a success thank you my dear students thank you all resource persons eminent speakers fellow participants and each and everyone thank you all thank you sir the inaugural session is over now we will move on to our first session of invited talk now i would like to invite sindhu ma'am the faculty of fatima mata national college to introduce our guest dr a r rajan director of the state institute of encyclopedic publication trivandrum കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ടോ കേൾക്കുന്നുണ്ടോ വെൽക്കം ടു ഓൺ ആൻഡ് ഓൾ the first session of the international conference on algebra and discrete mathematics 2022 conducted by the department of mathematics fatima mata national college kollam in accordance with the pi day today i am very happy to introduce today's speaker dr a r rajan sir our beloved teacher and an inspiring personality to all of us he is very much familiar to all mathematics fellows in kerala university a man of simplicity filled with vast knowledge in mathematical science even though his contribution to mathematics can't describe in few words let me introduce him he is a professor reader former head of the department of mathematics university of kerala kariyattam his major scientific fields of interest are algebraic theory of semi groups linear algebra functional analysis theory of categories topology theory of formal languages and automata he has around 20 publications in international journals and 20 in national journals he produced 10 phd's he has done 10 international conference talks outside india and 10 conference talks within india and has taken part in numerous seminars and various in various colleges and universities he has participations in many academic bodies he was a member of senate kerala university member of board of studies in kerala university mahatma gandhi university kannur university and madras university member of faculty of science kerala university member of academic council kerala university and so on also he has participations in administrative bodies he is a member of syndicate university of kerala vice chairman of academic committee for the conduct of the credit and semester course at kerala university he also held many positions in many organizing bodies currently he is a member of board of studies kerala university and central university kasargod editor in asian european journal of mathematics director of institute of mathematics research and training tiruvannadapuram director of state institute of encyclopedia trivandrum with all respect and happy i welcome dear dr rajan sir to the session over to you sir okay do you hear me yes sir Uh, 
let me ready Okay, uh, the screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I will uh, start by first of all, I am very happy uh, to associate with this uh, conference organized at the Padma Mata College, Kollam. Also, I thank. Uh, for the nice words of introduction. Okay, there is some, uh, I don't know whether the uh, presentation is going uh, uh, well with you. So, uh, at intervals, uh, somebody should uh, respond whether uh, things are uh, coming uh, smoothly or if at all there is a problem, uh, you may report because I find that uh, during the presentations and uh, even uh, during the first few minutes, there were some uh, network problems and uh, uh, low voices, etc. So I hope uh, you, you hear me well, right? Do you hear me properly? Yes, yes sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, what happens is uh, I am, I am, uh, my full screen is with the presentation, so I don't see the uh, audience and I don't see uh, how it is being uh, received. So that is why. I would like to uh, get some voice answers when I make a query. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, uh, so I have decided to speak on an elementary aspect of semigroup theory. Uh, that is the area of research. I have been doing, and that is again one of the major areas of research currently going on in Kerala University. Uh, but I will start with the, the familiarity I hope the students also have about groups. So we will uh, build on some higher level structures from groups and see that uh, these groups have a, a different role in uh, related areas like semi-groups and uh, another one is the topic of group points. So, uh, this question about uh, subgroups in groups is a very uh, general one. In every worldwide, you can see in the classrooms of groups, group theory, uh, this is a very commonly asked question. Suppose you have a group G and uh, two subgroups, H and K. So one first question usually we encounter is whether the intersection is a subgroup. And that is a very simple exercise uh, to see that it's going to be a subgroup. Then the natural subsequent question arises 
as whether the union is a subgroup. And we know the answer in general is that it is not a subgroup unless one of them is contained in the other. So in that case, the union happens to be one of them. So if the union is a proper union, different from both S and K, then necessarily we will see that this is not a subgroup. So the associated question or questions are whether you can give a structure on the union. Or the basic question now is, is there a relevant algebraic structure in which a union will be a member? So if the structure is group, you can say it is not a member. If the structure is a semi-group, uh, anyway, we have to uh, decide whether it can be a member or it need not be a member. So we will go on to see what are the structures where you can realize unions as belonging to the structure. So in general, the question is, is there a well-established structure in which the union of groups are admitted as an object? And the second one is, apart from the theoretical uh, inquiry, as to whether the what is the structure of a union, whether the unions have a natural place in certain mathematical contexts. So, what are the natural situations? The are or are there natural situations where the union of groups will be a naturally arising object? And you can see that. Uh, Elementary mathematics will provide you situations where you have union of groups appearing as the objects uh, in, in the context. So the one uh, starting situation is provided by a set and a bijection on subsets. That is, you take a sequel to union of all bijections of A into A, where A is a subset of X. So note that we, we don't take bijections from A into B, we take only bijections on A into itself. And that is taken for every subset. So that will be again a, a, an object, is, is taken as the union of these things, will be an object, which will be significant in studies of uh, mappings on the set X, when X has some special structures, there again this type of bijections will be relevant. And now we can see if X is an arbitrary set, the union is not going to be a group. That's not very difficult to see. And one of the very direct structures that you can give on the union is what is called groupoid. So groupoid is a structure which will contain any union of groups as an object in that. So these groupoids are a sort of generalizations of groups. And one significance is that this has been very frequently used in structure theory of semi-groups. So, so, to be precise about the terminology, uh, we define a semi-group uh, uh, to be a set with an associative binary operation. And we will see that a groupoid is a set with the associative partial binary operation. And, and further, all elements in a groupoid are invertible. So actually, uh, the term groupoid 
has a different description in a, some earlier uh, early day books for example in a earlier algebra books the term group word was used for it's set with just a binary operation only but here we are using a modern usage of the term group word where this is set with partial binary operation this means every pair may not have a product but we'll decide or we'll describe the pairs which will admit products so for certain pairs there is a product and every element will be invertible and again invertibility here means there's an element say a is said to be invertible if there is an element a inverse not like this such that the product is an identity a a inverse is an identity which we denote by e and a inverse a is an identity which we denote by f and two identities have a different roles e will be left identity for a and f will be right identity for a can happen that they are equal but not necessarily they are equal so the possibility is that you can have different identities on left and right so i will see that this group words appears as a major component in several structure theories of semi groups so some, some examples are the structure theories developed by cases number part so cases number part yeah his name is very legendary in a semi group theory he has been in the kerala university he was my supervision teacher he was a well well renowned uh, semi group theorist and he main main uh, structure theory is developed by, by number part used the idea of group points and boris train is again a very renowned semi group theorist he also has visited kerala university he, uh, he still is uh, contributing in that area and mark lawson is again a very active currently active researcher in semi group theory he also has associated with the kerala school of semi group theory recently we had a online conference in which mark lawson was a speaker that conference was organized in memory of a professor namburi part and there are several other people using few points as a basic structure in the structure theory of semi groups okay so if when you compare the group points and groups you can see that they resemble group points will resemble groups in that every element has a unique inverse and the major difference is that group points may have several identities and of course certain pairs of elements may not be having a product that is the major difference so we'll make it precise a group point can be defined as follows this only to be complete in the terminologies so we can consider or define a group point as a triple a g t g and a small o g is non empty set d g is a subset of the g cross g that will stand for the domain of the 
binary, partial binary operation. So when the domain is the whole of G cross G, we get a binary operation. When the domain is part of G cross G, we say the operation is a partial binary operation. And the small o will stand for the mapping, which is the binary operation. And the following are the requirements. First of all, it is associative, which means x, y, z will be equal to x times y, z. And because it is a groupoid, and this will mean that both sides are defined in the groupoid, and then they are equal. So the equality always means that the given product is defined, and you have the equality. And uh, second condition is that every element has a unique left identity and a unique right identity. We usually denote by ex and fx these left and right identities. And again, it means that ex is a left identity will mean that the pair exx will be a element in the domain of the binary operation. Likewise, xfx will be a element in the domain domain of the binary operation and you have the product ex is ex into x is x x into fx is again x okay uh, i think you have to continue it's a the third one is the number has been written uh, one but it is going to be a third condition so every element has two associated identities you denote them by already if I denoted that not by ex and fx uh, and then the product is defined or the xa will belong to the domain only when the right identity for x is equal to the left identity for y and the notations rx and dx are used to resemble the property that the elements can be treated as mappings where the left identity can be realized as the domain and the right identity can be realized as the codomain of the entry. Anyway, these are only standard uh, symbols used in the context. And then the another condition is that the product will exist. If the product exists, dx that is the left identity for x and the right identity of x y will be the right identity for y and of course uh, you require the x inverse is the left identity and uh, x inverse x is the right identity So one of the easy example is, of course, a union of two groups. So G equal to G1 and G2 union of two groups. And we say the domain is taken as all pairs which are coming from either both entries from G1 or both entries from G2. That is, DG is equal to X such that X and Y belong to G1 or X and Y belong to G2. And you can see, uh, two, for two elements in G, uh, in G, X and Y, the product is defined only when both belong to either G1 or G2. And then the product will be same as the product in the group. So essentially, you are get, what you are getting is just the two independent groups considered as a single object. The union considered as a single object. So there is nothing uh, new about that. But the only advantage here is that this will fit into what is called a groupoid. And uh, about groupoids, there is a developed theory. There are several, several uh, uh, properties have been identified. And all that, all those properties can be made available in the union. That is the advantage with realizing the union as a groupoid. Anyway, and again, you can see the groupoids are not all uh, union of groups. So I can have an example, which is not a union of groups. So one best example will be again related to mapping 
between sets, you take a set X and consider variations of A to B, where A and B are not necessarily equal. And then you can see, uh, for every A and B, if there is a variation between A and B, then you take that as a member of GX. And that can be done for any subset. You take the, all of them together. And here you can see uh, GAB will stand for the set of all bijections from A to B. And we say that the product X is defined when X belongs to GAB and uh, Y belongs to GCD, defined only when B and C are equal. And the product will be taken as the usual composition of the maps. And you can see. If X and Y are bijections, the product also will be a bijection. So that will belong to the set considered. And you can see here, if A and B are not equal, uh, GAB is not going to be a group. Whereas if A and B are equal, that is GAA, that is bijections of A into A, will be group. So this, this group word will contain several groups and also it will contain elements which are not belonging to a group. So, more specifically, you can consider A set A equal to 1, 2, B equal to 3, 4, and consider G equal to G A will stand for all the bijections of A, G B will stand for all bijections of B, and G A B will stand for the bijections from A into B, and G B A will stand for all bijections from B into A. And these four sets together, you can see, will be a groupoid, which again is containing two groups, G A and G B, and uh, two sets which are not groups, G A B and G B A. So in general, the appearance of a groupoid will be like this: that it may contain, it will contain several groups, and it will contain elements which doesn't belong to a group. So the, the relation between groupoid and group, group is the semigroup is that uh, often the every groupoid can be transferred to a semigroup. So what you require is that make the cooperation, the the binary, partial binary operation into a complete binary operation. Already the given uh, product is associated, so you may Ensure that the added products also will produce associative operation. Then you can see the whole thing will result in a semigroup. Semi group. Okay. So another way of doing it is by adjoining an element. So for example, one another way is that if G is a groupoid, we take a C equal to G with a zero adjoint. Zero will stand for a symbol which is which will uh, behave as zero for a multiplication. And that will be an element which is not in the original G. So you add a new element, you call it zero, and define the product in S by uh, X is equal to the original product in G in case the product is defined. That is X way belonging to DG means the product is defined in G. In that case, you take it as the original product. And if the product X is not defined in the groupoid, you make it zero. And further, with every zero, you assume that X into zero is zero, zero into Y is zero, like that. So with that, you can see the groupoid together with the zero adjoint will become a semi-group. And essentially, you can see that this is going to be the groupoid itself. When you remove the zero, what results will be just the original groupoid. But often we will go into considering uh, groupoids without adjoining the new element. Within G itself, you try to add products so that G itself will turn out to be a semi-group where the original products in the groupoid will continue to be 
see. So we will consider unilever groups as semi groups because that is one of the very well studied semi groups in theory of semi groups. So they they are they consider not this way, they don't uh, consider making a union into a semi group rather than that, they consider semi groups which arises as union groups. Okay. Okay. Is there a problem with the ne network? Is there some problem with the network? No. You, you, you are hearing it okay? It's going well? Now we can hear, sir. Is it? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 All right. Now you can hear. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, and what I ask is because yesterday there was a in a, in a meeting, uh, often the uh, connection was missing. So sometimes we go on speaking and the people will not be hearing. That's why he, I ask in between. Okay. No, sir, it's, it's okay. Thanks. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a union of groups as semi groups. So this is a, one of the. Okay, uh, I'll read what is written there. Uh, consider groupoids which are union of groups and uh, consider the question of extending the groupoid product to a semi group product. That is the uh, question we are considering now. And as a class of semi groups, this has been a, uh, studied extensively during the early days of semi group theory. Because the actually semi group theory is a uh, comparatively new field having its origin. Uh, around the uh, 1940s, 30s and 40s. And in the earlier days, one of the class of semi-groups that was studied extensively was the semi-group which will arise as union of groups or semi-groups in which every element will belong to a subgroup. A subgroup means a sub-semi-group which is going to be a group with respect to the Induced operation of binary operation. Okay. So the uh, the semi groups are also named as union of groups. So actually, the term union of groups uh, in semi group theory refers to a class of semi groups, which can be released as union of subgroups, groups which are subgroups of the semi group. So, our uh, aim in this talk is to see how we can provide multiplications on the union of groups so that the original products will be retained and with the added products we get a semi group. So, we will uh, start with an example. I think the Symmetric group is very much familiar. Symmetric group, S3 means S3 stands for the symmetric group on three symbols. That is all the permutations of set of three elements. And you know it is a group of order six. And S4 will similarly symmetric group on four symbols. So that will that'll be there for a group of order 24. And you consider the union S3 and S4. So there are several ways of looking at the union. One is you regard elements of S as permutations on the set 1, 2, 3. Generally, three symbols means symbols can be any three element set. So quite often we take it as 
the set 1, 2, 3 and consider the permutations on 1, 2, 3. That will be S3. Similarly, S4 will be there for the permutations on 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see the permutations on 1, 2, 3 can be regarded as permutations in S4 also. Where you will uh, consider it as fixing the last symbol. So if you take any permutation in S3, so on the symbols 1, 2, and 3, that will act as element in S3. And on 4, it will make it unchanged. 4 will be mapped into 4. So that way, uh, you can consider the S3 as a part of S4. So you may say that S3 is contained in S4, and so the union is just uh, going to be S4 only. And, see, and you can say the union is that the group is for but one two three is different from a permutation on one two three four so they have to be treated separately but if you are agreeable to treating it as part of s4 you can you are getting a as far as, as the union, but that is not an interesting case. But we are going to the more interesting situation when they are treated as different itself. So we may say they are different and they disjoint. And then uh, we go to define a product in the union. There also you can see we take an element in the union. If both the elements, two elements in the union. If both elements belong to S3, you have a product in S3. If both belong to S4, you have a product in S4. So we consider only the case where one is in S3 and the another one is in S4. So alpha in S3, beta in S4. And define alpha and beta to be alpha prime into beta and beta alpha to be beta into alpha prime. Well, alpha prime is again the permutation in S1234, which was obtained by identifying the alpha in S3. Uh, the element of history in S4. That is, alpha prime is defined as alpha for i equal to 1, 2, 3. And when i is 4, alpha four, alpha prime 4 is equal to 4. So earlier identification, but here we don't take it as alpha prime is not taken as equal to alpha. We are taking it to be different from alpha, but alpha is in S3 and alpha prime is in S4. So the product is going to be alpha prime beta is a product in S4. And so the product of alpha and beta is uh, this product in S4. Likewise, beta alpha also will be beta into alpha prime, which again is a product in S4. And you can see uh, that will make it uh, the union into a semi group. And in this case, if you take, for example, alpha and beta in S3, okay, it is already defined to be the product in S3. And if alpha and beta are in S4, it's already the product in S4. So the the, semi -group, the, the groups will remain as subgroups of the union. It is a semi-group, that is the union. Okay. And this semi-group, you can see, is not going to be a group. And also, it is not going to be a group point. So it's not a group because the elements in S3 has one identity. It is the identity on the symbol on the set 1, 2, 3. And the elements in S4 have a different identity, which is the identity in the set 1, 2, 3, 4. So uh, you have two, uh, different identities for different elements. And consequently, you can say uh, this cannot be a group. And likewise, it's not a groupoid because uh, you can see, for example, the uh, existence of, I'm going into details, okay, just to see the final. You can see that same element, you can see if you take a beta like this, okay, let me see what is this. If you take a beta in a S4, and if you take a F as the identity in uh, S4 and the E as the identity in S3, you can see that 
Vita has both E and F as identities. But in a group word, you can have only one identity, left identity and a unique right identity. So two identities cannot be allowed in a group word. Consequently, you can say uh, this union is not going to be a group word. So we are getting a proper semi-group, which is not a group and which is not a group word. Okay. Now we'll see, so given two groups, The first question is, is there always a semi-group structure on the union? Or can the union be made into a semi-group? And then, and we can see there are always uh, possibilities exist. And then the question is, what are the various ways in which the union can be made into a semi-group? It, 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 one way only, or is, is there, are there several ways in which this can be done? Then, of course, finding what are all the possible uh, extensions of the. Okay. Anything? So, if you have some questions, you can uh, you can raise in between also. You need not wait for the end of the lecture for raising questions. Okay, is there some question? Is there some question? Okay. Is there some question? No, sir. Okay. Sir, okay. Continue, we sir. continue. We can continue, sir. Okay. I don't. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Fine. Thank you. So we continue. So when you are given uh, two arbitrary groups, we consider the question how the union can be made into a semi group. So, the assumption that you describe the products x, y, and y, x for uh, x in g1 and y in g2. There are, uh, to start with, we can have a very simple way of doing it. If x is in g1 and y in g2, you define x, y equal to y and y, x equal to y. That is, x, y, and y, x are equal and equal to y. Uh, similarly, you can uh, define x, y, and y, x are equal and equal to x. Both these will behave uh, in a sim similar way, and you can see these products will be uh, make the union into a semi group. That is one way of uh, making the union into a semi group. Another one is uh, suppose you further know that the groups G1 and G2 are isomorphic. Suppose you start with two isomorphic groups, then there is a way in which the products X, Y, and Y, X can be different. Because in the earlier case, both X, Y, and Y, X are equal. Now you do it this way. The isomorphic case, You define x y equal to x prime y and y x equal to y prime x. Where x prime is x going to x prime is an isomorphism from g1 to g2. And y to y prime is the inverse. So x so will be a product in the group g2. And y x will be a product in the group g1. So they are necessarily different. And you are making use of the isomorphism between the two groups to define this. Here again, one, one can verify that this product will make the union into a semi group. Okay, this is a dual of that. Instead of uh, taking the x in, uh, XO in the G2, you can take x in G1 and the yx in. Uh, now it is in, a, in the first case, in case 3, yx is in a G1, you can make it in G2. So you just uh, 
alter the roles of G1, G2. That is case four. And now, we can see these are the general ways in which you can give a semi-group structure on the union. So actually on the union, you cannot go it, do it very arbitrarily. There are very uh, rigid some certain rules by which only the product can be assigned. So the following is a theorem by Clifford. He is a, Clifford was one of the beginners of semi group theory. It's a theorem he established around 1940. He says that if S equal to G1 union G2 is a semi group in which G1 and G2 are distributed into subgroups, then the product of G1 into G2 will be either in G1 or in G2. That is, when you take an element X in G1 and Y in G2, if XY belong to G1, then for any other choices, S prime and Y prime, again the product will be in G1. That is, uh, the product cannot go arbitrarily. So certain products of G1 with G2 is in G1. And certain other product of G1 with G2 is in G2, it cannot be possible. So that way, you have a very rigid rule uh, observed by or satisfied by the products coming out of union of groups. Actually, the result is uh, now stated for two groups. This can be done for any arbitrary union. If you take any union of groups, again, you can see the product of two groups there, whole will be contained in a one group. So, for example, if you have a, a three groups, then G1, G2 can be in G1 or in G2 or in G3. Anyway, the whole product will belong to one group only. So, that's a very uh, significant theorem about the union of groups. And uh, so, for the beginners, and students, they can check it with an example. Uh, you take G1 to be a cyclic group of order 2. We will write for convenience the elements as E and A. E is the identity. And G2 is the cyclic group of three elements, where, which again you write as uh, F, B, and B squared, where uh, uh, 1 will stand for F. F is the identity. G e is the identity for G1. F is the identity for G2 here, B3 should be equal to F, not 1. Okay. Uh, right one because it is you know, it is by mistake, but uh, the, the, the idea is that B3 will stand for the identity. Now we consider the uh, semi structure on G1 and G2. Uh, so this is an easy exercise to see that suppose that AB, where A is in G1 and uh, B is in G2. Okay, that is already there. A is already in G1, B is in G2. If you take AB to be B in the new product, then you can see that all the products will belong to G2. Like EB, EF, EB, EB square, AB square, etc. All the products with the first entry from G1 and second entry from G2 will always like G2. Likewise, if you have a product AB is equal to A, then you can see all the products will lie in G1. This can be verified. This is only for a easy verification of the earlier theorem. So we will uh, see that the uh, possibilities are now written in a diagram. Here, uh, given uh, in the first line, G2 in the second line, which means that the product of G1, G2 will be equal to G2. Also, the product of G2, G1 is also G2. And the second uh, diagram shows G2 on the second line, which means the products are going to be G2 only. Now, the other situations when G1 and G2 are isomorphic, you can say the first line shows G1, uh, G2, G1 is G1 and G1, G2 is G2. So you may write it as a row. And the second possibility is that G1, G2 is G1 and G2, G1 is G2. These are the possibilities of the products. But the, then again, the exact uh, Assignment of the product uh, can be different. For example, even in this situation, there are several ways in which the product of two elements in G1 and G2 can be defined. But only thing is that you can always ensure that to which group this product will belong. That can
can be ensured, but the actual value can be different for different methods of defining the product. Okay. So the earlier uh, situation where the groups are considered to be isomorphic, the product was defined like this uh, using a isomorphism. And now you can see, in case the uh, groups are not isomorphic, there again a similar method of providing products can be considered. Here the uh, situation will ensure, uh, ensure that there are different uh, for different choices of this psi, you get different uh, assignment of the products. So there are several semi semi group structures depending on the choice of psi. And when the groups are not isomorphic, we will uh, make use of homomorphisms in place of isomorphism. And that can be also used to define products. For example, you consider a homomorphism phi from G1 to G2. And define the product by x y equal to phi x into y and y x equal to phi into phi x. So here the products are all lying in G. That will give you a yes, semi structure. Similarly, if you use a homomorphism from G2 into G1, you can define again products in such a way that all the values will lie in G1. So here also uh, choosing uh, five differently, you can you get different choices for the product. So there are several semi-group structures, but the general uh, limitation is that uh, it will depend on a homomorphism like this, or in the earlier case, an isomorphism like that. That is the limitation. So now we uh, go over to some special unions uh, where the unions are taken over some structured sets. For example, you consider like this, union G alpha of groups alpha indexed over a set omega groups. And when this omega has a structure, then you can see using the structure of omega, the semi-group can be given a very uh, convenient description. For example, if omega is a semi-group, we say S is a semi-group of groups, where you will require that the product of S alpha into S beta is contained in S of alpha beta. Because when omega is a semi-group, for alpha beta in omega, the product alpha beta is defined. So you consider the semi-group structure in such a way that product of S alpha into S beta is contained in S alpha beta. In such cases, we say the union is a semi-group union of groups. So, some of the specially studied situations are uh, the following structures on omega, which is, a, for example, the semi uh, say omega to be a semi-lattice or a band or rectangular band. These are, again, all special semi-groups. So, the theory will provide uh, characterizations of all possible ways in which a product on the union can be defined, provided it is a similarities of groups, or it is a band of group, or it is a rectangular band of group, like that. So we consider these three uh, special uh, classes of semi-groups arising as union of groups. One is similarities of groups, another one is a band of groups, another one is rectangular band of groups. And the terminology, similarities, I think, uh, must be uh, uh, may, uh, I don't know whether students have come across that terminology, similarities. Lattice, they must be familiar. Similarities means it is a part, it's a half of the lattice. In lattice, you have a, a maximum and a minimum, or a supremum and infimum. Whereas in similarities, you either have a supremum or have an infimum. So we conveniently uh, consider similarities as partially ordered set in which uh, every pair of elements has a infimum, that is a greatest lower bound. That's a product. 
in terms of alpha beta will be written as a product alpha beta you can see that that will make the similarities into a semi group also so we can consider therefore the similarities of groups as a union in which g alpha beta will be contained in g of alpha beta so you consider what are the possible ways in which a union of groups indexed over a similarities can be made into a semi group So there are uh, several ways of doing this one. A uh, very special situation is the case where this uh, product is produced in terms of homomorphisms rather than uh, ra rather a class of homomorphisms. Say you say family of homomorphisms by alpha beta from G alpha to G beta. Uh, if it is defined for a very beta smaller than alpha, so the property that the product of the composition of alpha beta with beta gamma is equal to alpha gamma whenever the inequalities gamma less than beta less than alpha holds and also that the homomorphism from g alpha into g alpha itself will always be taken as the identity yeah. in that case if you are given uh, the, uh, these things that is a uh, you have a similarities indexed union of groups and you have a family of homomorphisms like this that's saying one and two then you can define a product for x in g alpha and y in g beta as image of x under alpha to alpha beta and the image of y under beta to alpha beta and you can see alpha beta will be smaller than alpha and also smaller than beta so phi alpha alpha beta and phi beta alpha beta are defined and these images are in the group g alpha beta and therefore the product x y is in the group g alpha beta so uh, this will uh, give you a semi group structure on the union and this type of semi groups are called a uh, uh, strong uh, similarities of groups because uh, it is in the, it is a uh, different in terms of specific homomorphisms similarly like rectangular bands of groups are considered Uh, means you have a, you have a rectangular band means again a semi group which will like appear like a diagram uh, shown in the diagram you can see here a rectangular band in the elements will appear as elements in a entries in a rectangle all the star will stand for elements and if a and b are in the two corners as given here you can see ab will be on the right corner and ba will be on the left corner But if you are, if you see x and y on two corners like the last uh, two rows, you can see x will be uh, on the right of x and uh, above y, y x will be left of y and uh, below x like that. So the elements are arranged in this form, and there is, uh, and you can see the presentation gives you a very well defined way of assigning the product. If the products are assigned in this way. and uh, this type of semi groups are called uh, rectangular bands and uh, natural way of description is that you write it as a product i cross lambda where the product is defined as i lambda into j mu is i into b i and b a space okay so now what we uh, go over to see is consider a collection of groups g i lambda indexed over a rectangular band i lambda then you make it into a semi group and then that will be known as a rectangular band of the semi groups okay okay the, there are several ways of doing it we are not going to that because i think we have to uh, finish in a few minutes so i'll just uh, go over to see what is the final implication of this so this is a theorem which will tell that okay uh, and again uh, there is a terminology associated and there are several ways of defining a uh, semi structure on the rectangular band of groups and these semi groups are called completely simple semi groups and this completely simple semi group have a very established structure and uh, what is it is known as this matrix semi groups so the this matrix semi groups means it is defined in terms of a group and a matrix 
P of index logger uh, two sets lambda and i. And the elements are taken as uh, these triples, i, g, lambda, and the product is like this. Anyway, uh, actually, this is a special case of the structure of a very large class of semigroup. And this can be seen as very relevant in the study of union of groups. So what happens is that if you have groups arranged like this in the, in the rectangular box, in place of elements you write groups, say G11 is a group, G12 is a group. But in general, if G i lambda, G j mu are groups, then the product will lie in the G i mu position. So that is what you get as a rectangular band of groups. Now the, the general theorem about this class is this one. A semigroup S is a union of groups. If and if it is a similarities of completely simple semigroup, that is similarities of rectangular bands of groups. Because completely simple semigroups we have seen are rectangular bands of groups. So every union can be realized in terms of uh, similarities of rectangular bands of groups or you can say any union of groups will appear like this so suppose you have a union of groups then all the g's g1 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 etc are isomorphic groups they will form in they will belong to one rectangular band of group then h1 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 one h1 etc they are again isomorphic to each other but not with the not necessarily with the g H, all, all the H11, H12, H I lambda, all these are isomorphic. Then that will, that will form into a different rectangular band of groups. Then K11, etc. is again different rectangular band of groups. And the union of this type of rectangular band of groups will be the nature of every union of groups. So it's a very, uh, you can say, very one, one way, theorists will say it's a beautiful theorem on the structure of union of groups. So the complete union uh, structure is known, but uh, what we further require is uh, the exact products, how the exact products are defined. That is, uh, again, a further required uh, study. That's a question uh, recurring further study. So yeah, that, that again is classified into several ways. I, I just uh, uh, go to some final questions in the context. So one of the questions is whether the products of idempotence, idempotence means elements which are uh, behaving like identities or which have this property, the square is equal to itself. Because these type of elements, in you know, as idempotence, they have a very major role in the study of semigroups. So one of the questions is whether you can have a product in the union of groups where the product of two item button will be again item button, which otherwise means the product of two identities will remain again to be a identity of the another group. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, of course, uh, in general, you can see uh, it is not the case. Uh, you can see several examples where the product of two identities of the groups are not going to be identity in a third group. But there are possibilities of uh, having it. That is, the product of two item buttons can be item buttons. So then, uh, finding uh, what are all possibilities. So it's again, a, that is a very uh, relevant question in this context. Uh, we will, uh, okay. We will uh, complete with the, conclude this section with the general theorem. Because you can see that the union of groups is not a very isolated situation in semigroup theory. Actually, there is a very large class. There is a very interesting theorem. Uh, a semigroup is commutative and regular. Regular means there is a generalized inverse for the semigroup. If that is the case, it's possible if and only if it is a similarity of abelian groups. Okay. So, the similarities of groups is again, you can see, is a very uh, non-trivial 
a class of groups and uh, all the commutative regular semi groups are appearing as similarities of abelian groups only so the union that this will say that the study of union of groups, groups is quite relevant in the theory of semi groups so i will conclude with this observation uh, so what we have uh, finally come to is that the union of groups can be studied as semi groups uh, very fruitfully and of course uh, there is a possible study of it as a groupoids which we have not gone into uh, by deep details but there there is a possible way of studying it by groupoids also so it's only an introduction to both this type of uh, view on the union of groups so i'll uh, conclude with this thank you for the attention if you have some queries some questions comments you can make thank you Yes. Okay, I have completed. Do yeah. you hear? Sir, I am Anil Kumar from Patil Kumar oh. National College. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, will you please give us, uh, some suggested readings for uh, these uh, topics? Oh, uh, that has not been a made part of the slide. Uh, actually, uh, the general uh, available textbooks are there. Uh, Hobby gives a textbook and uh, several references are there. Then the recent things uh, by number part there is a. Anyway, there are several. Uh, uh, references available. Uh, you can refer to uh, some of the recent publications in semi group theory. Uh, in the forum, there are some publications recently. And there is a recent uh, uh, conference proceedings uh, published by Springer uh, on the conference on, on uh, Cochin University Conference. That is a uh, recent publication by Springer. On uh, automata, uh, semi groups, and uh, no, no, semi groups, uh, grand groupoids. That, that is the title. And that is a very uh, extensive uh, references on the work of uh, both number part and uh, on groupoids. So actually, there is an article on number part in that uh, proceedings. Actually, it is edited by. Uh, myself and then uh, Professor uh, Romeo and uh, Professor Volkov of Russia. So there is a very recent publication, one can find several uh, references in that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I welcome Kriba, 3DC Max, for a vote of thanks. Good morning, everyone. It has been such an honor to be part of this wonderful event. On behalf of our Fatima Mada National College, Department of Mathematics, I would like to extend my gratitude to our esteemed Dr. A. R. Rajan Sa for the wonderful lecture. He enlightened our new structure group on he emphasized union of group as semi groups and some special union of groups such as semi lattice group, rectangular bands of group. Sir, your ideas and keen analysis on the topic have truly inspired us. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us and making this session a success. Thank you, one and all. Once again, thank you, sir, for this enlightening lecture. Now we will move on to the next invited lecture. Now I would like to invite Anvargis, ma'am, HOD of Department of Mathematics, to introduce our guest, 
ഡോക്ടർ അമ്പിളി അംബ ടഷോകൻ അസിസ്റ്റന്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ കൊച്ചിൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് സയൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി താങ്ക് യു രാജൻ സർ Okay thank you It's my privilege to welcome Dr Ambili Ambata Ashogan ma'am for the next session She has completed her PhD from Indian Statistical Institute in 2014 She was the visiting fellow at Tata Institute of Uh, she uh, she was the visiting fellow at tata institute of fundamental research mumbai from 2014 15 science and engineering research board overseas post doctoral research fellow at center for research in maths western sydney university australia in the year 2018 19 also she has received several grants and fellowships like rusa grant seed money for new research initiatives from qsat visiting fellowship university of chinese academy of sciences csir jrf 2008 nbhm phd fellowship 2008 gate 2008 with all india rank 79 jrf and srf indian statistical institute she is the recipient of young scientist award 2020 of kerala state council for science technology and environment government of kerala Her areas of interest are classical K theory, computational algebra, non-commutative algebras, and combinatorial number theory. She has nearly ten publications to her credit. She is currently serving as referee for Pure and Applied Algebra, Bulletin of Australian Mathematical Society, Indian Academy of Sciences, and Indian Journal of Pure and Applied Mathematics. she has served as a resource person for many national and international workshops and conferences currently she is working at the department of mathematics cochin university of science and technology ma'am we welcome you to this conference with immense pleasure for your rich address over to you ma'am and one second uh, let me just connect my headset also i forgot about it hello can you hear me yes ma'am yeah uh, is it fine uh, do i need to on the video because i have to share anyway so i'll share the content now okay ma'am no problem <laughs> okay so thank you uh, the committee uh, for uh, inviting me to this uh, conference international conference uh, it's an honor to uh, give a talk uh, at your college uh, so shall i begin now okay yes ma'am you can Okay. Is, yeah i'm audible and visible my my screen is visible no because i have connected to the wifi here i'm okay. not sure uh, since some time i have not used it so i don't know whether it is working properly so okay okay, okay. 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 So, uh, the audibility is important <laughs> so today i uh, initially i thought of talking more about the uh my research uh, area in detail but uh, then i thought uh, it will be a bit more uh, higher uh, in uh, if i go into details of uh, my research topic so this is uh, my topic itself but the very elementary uh, elementary material which is required for my research uh this is ele uh, on elementary orthogonal groups i will be talking so many of you might have uh, heard of 
general linear groups. So these are uh, subgroups of special type of subgroups of general linear groups. So I will uh, just give you a classification of linear groups and its subgroups. Uh, so uh, one thing to note is that here I will take A to be a commutative ring instead of, uh, uh, so you might be familiar with, instead of A, you might be familiar with let uh, K be a field, okay? So, and you might be, or, or you might have known in, in particular, you might have taken K to be the real number field or the complex number field. You can uh, imagine like that also, you can think uh, in that way. So this, uh, and you might have studied GLNR. So these are all generalization of, so we are considering the general linear group over general rings, not just the field or not just in particular, uh, the real number field or complex number field. So here in inside this, uh, a real number field over real number field our things get more uh, simplified and over e even if we replace this uh, real number field with uh, any field also things are much simpler or it's not very simple as we expect but even then uh, it is simpler than the commutative ring is okay so uh, simple uh, can be, this is very relative. So you can uh, think that it is simpler than when we consider uh, the commutative ring instead of the field. So I hope uh, at least few of you might have heard of GLNR. Uh, is it? Yes, miss. Okay, thank you. So uh, then I, it's a bit a uh, familiar group. Huh? So we, these are very important groups. Uh, if, you, if you see the uh, classification of groups, so one important class of groups is the linear groups and its subgroups. And uh, classification is this way. So we have the general linear group. So I will be considering a commutative ring with unity. And I will also assume that two is invertible in it. So this invertibility of two is uh, required for uh, some definitions. And uh, there are more general situations than this where they will avoid the invertibility of two also. So we will not get into those. The, those are much more complicated. So we will not get into such definitions. So for us, two is always invertible. And uh, so here, you consider the linear group GLNA, that is the group of all invertible matrices. Here, the entries are coming from A, the commutative ring A. Okay. So, and then we consider the subgroup of GLNA generated by the matrices of the form EIJ of A, which is equal to the identity matrix plus A, A epsilon IJ, where epsilon IJ is the matrix with the one at the IJ entry and zero elsewhere. So uh, I can give you uh, some, some uh, some uh, examples uh, of this. So EIJ of uh, A. So this we define. Yes, any question? Hello, hello. No, ma'am. Okay, okay. Can, uh, if there is no question, can you please mute? There is some disturbance uh, from one of the mics. And, and Anita, I think Anita's. Uh, Okay, okay, now it's fine. I think. Thank you. So, EIG of A, this is uh, the matrix with the ijth entry, you will have A. So, you take uh, say E23 of A. Uh, if you consider uh, 
डायगनलटी प्लस पोजिशन सेकेंड रो and the third position uh, two three position you will have a and else where zero so this is your uh, elementary matrix of size So this is our elementary matrix uh, E two three O A. Is it uh, clear to you? So one example, one example it is. Okay. So similarly, you can write whichever you is your L uh, accordingly. You will have uh, as many. So I J can be varying from all uh, when whenever I not equal to J, I not equal to J. You can define this. I not equal to J or all the entries. So you will have n square uh, minus n, n square minus n entries, uh, n elements. You will have of this form E I J of it. So you can count them, and you can see that the group, subgroup generated by uh, these uh, type of matrices, which we call it E N of A, which is the elementary linear group. And uh, there are few. Uh, few information about this ena ena what are they doing what is this uh, matrix doing to a, 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 a any matrix what will be the action of this matrix on any other matrix so for example in 2 by 2 case if you take 1a 0 1 this is your one elementary matrix and this is acting on your x y z a z b uh, uh, w so let us do this so what will be the left multiplication by this you will have x here and x plus a z and then y plus a w and the rest is z w so what you are getting the first row is transformed to row 1 Is transformed to row one plus a times row two, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, miss. So the elementary matrix actually this elementary matrix corresponds to the elementary row operation. So this corresponds to the elementary row operation. So that is the uh, row operation. That is what you should note. Okay. Uh, elementary linear matrices they corresponds to the elementary row operation and uh, so here one thing is that you have you you might have heard of other row operations or also right row column interchange those those kind of operations we will not be considering so we will be considering only uh, the operations which will transform like this one row is get multiplied with another row and get added so this kind of operation only we will be considering and in uh, this is the subject the subject is known as k theory so in this we will, for us elementary operation means only this this kind of operation elementary operation means Only this type, the uh, R one to R I to R I plus A R J. This type, elementary linear, okay? Elementary linear operation, okay? Only this type in K theory, okay? And the group generated by such elementary. operations or such elementary matrices each operation this means it's an uh, it's it's uh, it's a function right it's a function so that corresponds to a matrix and that is an invertible matrix here and that matrix is a linear 
elementary matrix. And such, if you collect all such matrices, so in the two by two case, only uh, how many are there? You have only two types, one A, zero, one, this is one type, and uh, you have another one of this type. So you collect uh, these two, and these two will generate a group. These two will generate a group, and this group is here E to A. E to A, and this is a subgroup of GL to A. And also, you can see that this group, uh, and you know one group, it is SLN of A. What is this? This is the special linear group. What is the uh, peculiarity of this group? All the elements have determinant, all the matrices have determinant one. Isn't it? Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Yes. P in GLNA with the bit of P is equal to 1. So, so here you can check that this E to A E to, or EN, EN, EN of A is a sub of SLNA and it is a sub of GLNA. And also, first of all, I want to tell more about this linear groups and then I will get into uh, the um, orthogonal subgroups. So these all groups, these are very important classes of groups. So here we can get that so E to A this is equal to SL to A so this uh, uh, sorry, E to A not equal to S L to A, but uh, for E to A not equal to S L to A, you can check this. But uh, for for n greater than or equal to three. E3A, okay, so ENA. This is equal to SLN. Actually, we can get that for any greater than to 3. ENA is a normal subgroup of. It's a very deep theorem. It's a normal subgroup of GLNA. In particular, it's a normal subgroup of SLNA. Okay. So, uh, this was proved by Suslin in 1977. He was a Russian mathematician. So, he proved a very famous theorem. So, uh, in addition to that, he was studying uh, such uh, subgroups, so this kind of, these subgroups, elementary linear groups, uh, over some polynomial rings. So, then instead of this here, A is any commutative ring, he was studying A is some polynomial ring, x1, etc., a uh, polynomial ring over some field. So, he, he studied that and he proved that it, uh, ENA is a normal subgroup of GLNA for any commutative ring with unity and n greater than the third. For n greater than the third. Very involved, very much involved theorem. That itself, the proof of this uh, result itself will take one like full lecture. Uh, so I will not get into that. Uh, so the thing is that there are, there are cases where uh, E2 is not equal to the special linear. So uh, that is what to be noted here. And also EN is normal subgroup of GLN. So let me get back to our uh, definitions. So another class. So this is one such important class is ENA. And next class is symplectic groups. 
symplectic groups this is very much important in uh, symplectic geometry uh symplectic groups sp2 n of a and uh, the uh, elementary so each such group has a elementary subgroup which is here elementary symplectic group i'll come into the definition of this symplectic group means it is set of all invertible matrices which will preserve this particular form which will preserve this particular form uh alpha transpose psi n alpha is equal to psi n where psi n is epsilon 2i minus 1 2i epsilon uh, this minus summation epsilon 2i 2i minus 1 so this means uh, this is so i will give you an example in the uh, so for example you take psi 2 psi 2 means i will come to that Psi two, so you can take this to be. This will be what is the notation uh, you have? Summation i equal to one to uh, two epsilon two i minus one two i. So you have summation i equal to one to two minus summation i equal to one to Two epsilon two i two i. What does this mean? What is epsilon two i minus one two i? So when i equal to one, you just substitute that. So you will have epsilon one comma two plus. Epsilon. When you substitute two, you will get this is three comma four minus here epsilon two i comma two i two i comma two i and i equal to one. This is two two and then uh, minus. So this will be. You will get this to be matrix zero one one zero. Zero one one. These are the. Um, these are the. So this is the matrix correspond to side two. Sorry, minus minus number zero one minus one zero. So you see, up to one two the position you will have one one, and three fourth position also you will have one, and two two the position you will have minus one, uh, and then four fourth position you will have minus. So that way it will go on. So uh, if you take it uh, psi three, you will have what will be that? So psi one, you take zero one minus one zero. This is your psi one, and psi two, zero one minus one zero. Then you have here you have the zero block matrix, zero block matrix. Then zero one minus one zero, and then psi three means again it's a six by six, hmm? six by six block. So you uh, observe that this. What is this block? This block, this block is psi one, isn't it? So you can rewrite this as psi one zero zero psi. Is it fine to you? Yes, miss. Okay. So now, so psi three means psi one zero zero. Then here, then again. Psi one zero zero. It's like this. So uh, it will go on like this. So uh, the symplectic group means 
that the group of all invertible matrices which preserve this form this is called the form matrix this is called the form matrix for 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 the symplectic form Uh, this changes according to the dimension if it is uh, 2 n is equal to 1 that means total dimension 2 then you have sp2n uh, it will preserve psi1 and sp uh, sp4 sp4 will preserve psi2 and sp6 that will preserve psi3 and this um, this form is alternating form alternating form and uh, due to that you will have only this even dimension even dimension only you will have the group only even dimension uh, always always oh, even dimensional always okay So this will preserve the form means what? So if you have a uh, matrix T, this is in SP2N of A means T is preserving the form. So that means you take T transpose, then psi, psi N, whichever psi it is, psi N, then T, which is equal to the psi N. So this is the, this preserves, preserves the form. Okay. We can write it in terms of uh, the, um, instead of matrix, you can write it in terms of the map also. In that way, you will have F of some sigma, X comma sigma y, this will preserve f of x comma y. It's like this. Uh, the form will be preserved by the, uh, so this will be the, uh, the form value will be the same. That's why. Okay. So now, So now we come back to the elementary symplectic group. So elementary symplectic group means you will have, so in elementary linear group, what you say, what you say, so, so here you have the elementary linear generators. So these are the generators for the elementary linear group. So here also we will have the symplectic, uh, elementary symplectic generators. That is, uh, they are the elementary symplectic matrices. elementary symplectic matrices. So how they are defined? There are two types of uh, matrices. So here uh, you have to take, so this uh, form, this form, form matrix psi is taken according to one particular uh, permutation. So you see here, so for example, psi three, so this, this corresponds to the permutation sigma, uh, the product of cycles 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is. So, uh, so basically, it will be 2i minus 1, 2i. This is the permutation. So uh, product of all such uh, summation, summation i equal to 1, 2, n. So you take all the sum of all such uh, permutations. Like, uh, write it as a product. Write it as a product. So that's what we have written here also. So corresponding permutation you have to take. So the elementary uh, symplectic generators, that one of them is, uh, is okay. 
So it is uh, identity plus Z I E epsilon I J. Epsilon I J is as earlier, which is the matrix with the one at I J entry and uh, zero elsewhere. If I equal to sigma J, so I equal to sigma J. So for example, uh, you take one, two, three, four. So if you are taking, uh, if you are taking uh, three, four, three, four. So S E three four, S E three four. You are taking, then you have the sigma I equal to sigma J because here if I equal to three and sigma of I or sigma uh, sorry sigma of J that means four that is also three. So I and sigma four are same. Therefore you take S C three four here which is identity plus Z E three four epsilon three. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, miss. So, uh, okay. So then next is if, if they are not equal, I not equal to sigma j and I less than j. I less than j is enough. So then you will get all of them. I less than j uh, because uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you the example. You will uh, find it why it is I less than j. I identity plus z epsilon i j. Minus minus one to the power i plus j is it epsilon sigma j sigma. I. So let me just write some example. So ESP to n of a, the members we are going to write. So for example, uh, here I take a four dimensional. That means. Uh, ESP 4K. So here you have SC IJ. So I'm not going to write all of them. So I'll just write SC2, uh, depicting all the cases. SC23 of.
there is a, a little technical issue will be it will be resolved soon Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Now it's fine. Hello. Uh, ma'am, it's audible, ma'am. Uh, uh, so when uh, this is my connection got turned off, sorry, uh, sorry my, my connection was turned off. Sorry, uh, sorry ma'am, audio. Uh, you were able to hear continuously? Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, now it's okay, ma'am. So okay now. Okay, okay. okay. So when uh, so did you, up to what you heard me. So I want to. Did you hear this ESP four uh, generators I told? Miss, yes, you you were discussing about the elementary simplicity group, uh, elementary simplicity generators and. In that, did did you see this example? No, ma'am. Okay. 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 So here the net, net connection is gone. So I I I'm using my personal connection. Okay. So SC34 will be of this one. So here it is not that here only at one one uh, place at only one place uh, you have this uh, is it and uh, not like this. One is there and the next is here. It's not like this. Okay, so there are that two types, and there are there is one more type that is fifty-two four. <coughs> okay, so minus right zero one zero 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 one. So here you see here uh sorry, here one. Z and then minus Z. So here Z and minus Z and Z. Both place Z and Z. So these three types of elementary simplicity generators are there. So now let us move on to the orthogonal group. So here in simplectic case, we saw that there is a uh, form matrix and the uh, matrix P which reserves. This form matrix is known as the symplectic matrix. Similarly, in the orthogonal group also, we will have a, the matrices will be reserving some form. Some form, that means it will preserve some form matrix like this, but there the form is different. So here it is the alternating form. In the orthogonal group, you will have the symmetric bilinear form. So that means the psi n, instead of psi n, we will have psi n tilde. This will be a symmetric, symmetric invertible matrix. 
convertible symmetric matrix. So this is symmetric bilinear form is non-degenerate also. That's why it's invertible. So let us see how um, it looks like. So in cyan tilde, cyan you saw that it is 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, like this. So here, cyan tilde, just I'm writing uh, cyan also because we can compare with uh, the non case. Cyan tilde, this is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, like this. Will have n. This is the matrix. This is the form matrix, and uh, T, which are uh, which all preserve this form, will be known as the orthogonal matrices. This is in the next slide. Here, so psi, uh, alpha transpose cyan tilde alpha is equal to cyan tilde. It preserves the form cyan tilde. Uh, all invertible matrices which preserve this form. Uh, they are known as orthogonal matrices. Do you find any familiarity with the, the uh, non orthogonal matrices what do you know about the orthogonal matrices any prior knowledge please tell me some of you don't think about this definition uh, please tell the definition which you know please anyone any ms ah okay a a transpose the set of form Invertible, you know, uh, so let me just uh, so GLN R, okay. R is the ring or uh, GLN, uh, okay. You take the field of GLN R, A A transpose equal to not the ring, A A transpose equal to what? A A O, no, I I I uh, A A transpose equal to I. So this is the definition which you know, but you, here you see. A in GLN and alpha transpose sine tilde alpha equal to sine tilde. So where this will shoot? So you take this sine tilde instead of sine tilde, you take it to be identity matrix. I n for I to n, whichever I n. Then what will be the result? It preserves the form, and here the form is the identity. So you take alpha transpose identity alpha, which is equal to I. So what does it mean? Alpha transpose alpha equal to I. So this is the same thing, no? So what is the conclusion? This is the more general. So what we and uh, we defined here is the more general version of the uh, orthogonal matrices, which you know already. Okay, then it's a very trivial form. It's a it's a trivial form that it's the identity. The form matrix is identity matrix. It preserves the identity form. So and here you have the uh, form matrix. There is a non-trivial form matrix. Now invertible matrix are and it is also symmetric. Zero one one zero. So, okay. Hope you understood it and compared it with the non situation. So they are all orthogonal matrices. So whenever you are asked uh, your uh, what is the definition of orthogonal matrix, so our real real, you can uh, say this. Okay, and uh, so but there is a general version of that, and that is this uh, definition. I hope it's clear to you now. Is it fine? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So now I move on to the elementary orthogonal group definition. So there, uh, you compare it with the symplectic orthogonal group, symplectic uh, linear group. Uh, so what is the uh, symplectic elementary group? So you have STIJ is defined in 
in like in terms of one permutation here also it's the same way but here there is no definition when i equal to sigma j so when i equal to sigma j you don't define you don't have oeij uh, so i not equal to sigma j you have oeij of z equal to i to n plus z epsilon ij minus z epsilon sigma j sigma i so uh, i will give you one example of matrix uh, so you can take oe 2 3 of z so there is only this type of matrices uh, in the elementary uh, orthogonal group uh, 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
one problem he posed in a very famous paper of him uh, it's a, it's in french so that uh, in uh, the uh, that the paper he posed the problem that with every finitely generated projective module the projective modules are a class of uh, modules uh, projective module this over a polynomial ring over a field is p so uh, every free module is projective but every projective module may not be free so uh, this was a very important question in geometric language uh, he proved uh, he asked uh, this question is same as whether every vector bundle over an affine space is trivial uh, so you might have heard of this hairy ball theorem so uh, you can uh, see that that but to be an affine space or that is in topologically so uh, that uh, every uh, bundle on that this that is a contractible space okay? this sphere is contractible to a point so you can uh, you can compare it with the statement it with, uh, with that that one like uh, it, uh, this uh, sphere is contractible uh similarly every other every vector bundle over an affine space is trivial so then this problem is known as search problem on projective module and uh, uh, it's very uh, up to 20 uh, 20 year uh, sorry up to uh, yeah 20 years it we uh, did not get solved and after uh, in 1976 uh, daniel pullen and andre sosley they independently solved this question. So, and now it is known as Finland Suslin theorem. Uh, so, Suslin was in uh, Russia and Finland was in Germany. They were, uh, so that time there was no communication possible, but uh, they independently solved in the same month uh, the problem. And Finland was awarded field medal for this work uh, and other contributions in algebraic theory. So there is a generalization of this problem that is known as Barsfield conjecture. Uh, there also uh, it's a similar way, like it's a, whether it's P or not, a similar way we have uh, the question uh, is over some commutative regular ring with particular dimension, full dimension D. Uh, then every finally generated project, we are replacing that field by a commutative regular ring. So I'm not explaining the terms, just that there is a generalization known as Boskilian conjecture, a very famous uh, generalization. So uh, now I get into the generalization of the orthogonal group. Uh, so in order to do that, I need some definitions. So let R be a commutative ring with unity and two is invertible in R. And you take M to be an R module. So R module, I hope you understand the definition of module. Or do, do I have to just take it as a, a vector space over a ring? So you think of it vector space over. So usually what is that vector space over a field? So you take the properties of the vector space over a ring. That is your module. So R is commutative ring and the two is invertible. And you take uh, a quadratic form on M that is a map which satisfies these two properties. Q of AX equal to A square Q of X. A is a scalar. A is a scalar coming from the uh, ring. And Q of X plus Y minus Q of X minus Q of Y is, a, is an R bilinear symmetric map from N cross M into R. So this is, you. you I hope you, you can relate this to the uh, our previous definition. You have a bilinear map. By linear symmetric map from uh, there it was over we did not specify from where it is so there it was from R N cross R N to R where R is a commutative so there we are we were taking any free module so this is general module so that's why we are replacing that by M. So n cross m into r. And quadratic space means you have a quadratic module q. That means a quadratic form is associated with it. 
and there q will be a finally generated projective module and this is with a non degenerate quadratic form so you just uh, take it uh, you have a uh, quad, uh, finally generated projective module and uh, you have a quadratic form non degenerate quadratic form and then you have a corresponding bilinear form also so you can write it as q q and a bilinear form associated to it so this triple is known as the quadratic space quadratic space and this bilinear form bilinear map you understand no bilinear map the map is bilinear in linear algebra you might have seen that so instead of the field uh k you replace it with the commutative here so you have the symmet uh, symmetry is there symmetry means b of b q of x comma y is same as b q of y comma x that is the symmetry and you have the bilinearity condition so scalar you have to multiply inside you can take it out as a scalar itself like uh, like that you can do the bilinearity conditions and the corresponding induced map is an isomorphism from q to q dual so you uh, do you understand that there is uh, if you have a vector space you have a v dual means you consider all the maps from v to r do you understand that if you have a finite dimensional vector space you have you can consider all the maps from the vector space to the uh so the space to the field field linear linear maps this is called the dual v dual dual of the vector space do you understand this yes miss okay similar way you can get dual of the module so you take all the maps from q to r q to r so q star means the set of four functions from q to r so r, r linear r linear maps from q to r so that there is an isomorphism there is an isomorphism between this q and q dual which is defined by bbq of x applied on y is b q of x comma y which is given by the bilinear okay so now uh, uh, so these are the preliminaries which we require uh, so this is the history of the transformation so orthogonal transformation is like b uh the number series uh, its name is dixon he did the, the transformation which are known as cp now it is known as transformation or regular transformation they are uh over any field particle so we hear earlier we uh, we saw now uh, the orthogonal group but that preserves a particular form so similarly here the transformations which preserves the quadratic form and the, the spaces are over Finite fields. So and then Siegel in the sequence Siegel and then the other then uh, Eichler, they all studied these transformations and they extended to general fields. And then uh, so uh, because Eichler Eichler is very famous number theorist Eichler and Siegel, so they studied these transformations. So this is known as Siegel transformations or Eichler transformation over field. In 1964. Uh, CTC wall. He presented this transformation over the ring of integers. So from the field field to uh, integers, integers, CTC wall did a generalization, and then Amit Roy general rings. Amit Roy in 1968 he rewrote the Eichler transformation in CTC wall's paper. He rewrote it and uh, uh he generalized it over the commutative vector here they he took a uh, one uh, free module of rank 1 uh, over n integers 
So that is ultimately the road to the transformation and then so before getting into the expected opinion, three um, module the schema F one is ready for that. I don't say H of Z X. H of Z X means I'll just tell you what is H of Z X. That is Z X direction Z F. So that is the space. So uh, one space and its dual you have to take and then its direction. So Z X and Z F. So uh, X X and F is the dual base. F is the dual basis for X. Zx. So Zx is the uh, free rank one free module. So it is generated by one element x, and uh, its dual space Zx in the dual means uh, it's Zf. Zx star is Zf. So you have h of Zx is Zx direction Zf. That is a volume space considering the class of this. Then uh, not this space q. You have q direction zx direction z. So this is the whole space. Uh, for that, you consider an it's a linear map. M, uh, uh, it's a linear map from q to zx, which is given by alpha z is given by the pi linear form of z comma w times x. So this is the definition of alpha z. Using that alpha, this is a linear map. This is an z linear map. Using that linear map, you write E W one. This is this whole set is the definition of the that particular orthogonal transformation. Z plus B Q of Z comma W of X. So this term you can rewrite it as Z plus alpha of Z alpha of Z, and then you have uh, X is mapped to X itself. F is mapped to minus W minus Q W times X plus F. So this is the definition. And as a generalization, we have this. As a generalization, you take a quadratic space and P is projective module, and then you define. It consider the space M is Q. Orthogonal sum. This symbol is orthogonal sum. That is Q and the elements uh, taken from Q. Uh, so if you take a, uh, a from Q and uh, some element uh, from H of P, H of P. So uh, say X. Then the inner product is zero. Inner product is zero. Uh, the bilinear form, the corresponding bilinear form that is denoted by the inner product symbol, that is zero. That's what this orthogonal perp, perp symbol means here. Uh, so that space is Q direction X of P and the quadratic form is Q uh, orthogonal sum P. And it is given by the bilinear form, corresponding bilinear form is given by B Q of A comma B plus F of Y plus B of X. So, and then you have the similar way, you have the uh, linear, uh, Maps alpha and beta, uh, linear maps from Q to P and Q to P D1. Using that, you define some transformation E alpha, E alpha, which is uh, the the corresponding generalization. You can just see the earlier generalization is Z plus alpha is that similar way here also Z plus alpha is it E alpha of X is X, and E alpha of F is minus alpha star of F minus half alpha alpha star of f plus z. So here, this alpha star is not the dual map. It is not the uh, usual dual map. Dual map which we denote by alpha transpose. Uh, so that means alpha is from q to p. You have alpha dual from p star to q star. And then alpha star. Alpha star is a composition of BB inverse composite alpha transpose. So you apply alpha transpose first, and then uh, from Q D1 to Q, you have BB inverse. You precompose it with the 
uh, first you apply alpha transpose and then you uh, apply dga that is your alpha star so this way amit roy has generalized the uh, elementary transformation and this transformation you can find it to be orthogonal transformation how do we check that it is orthogonal orthogonal means it should preserve the form so here the form my form is this thing in the product okay so that means you have to take e alpha say and use the symbol uh, z and then so this z some other uh, e alpha is not against i hope um, v and e alpha of v. this is equal to in the product v comma u so this is the where v comma u belongs to q per hp so this is the uh, definition of orthogonality so here So that means it preserves the form. So v comma u are two vectors taken from the quadratic space to per h of p. If you apply e alpha to that, then uh, yeah, the in and take the inner product that will be the same as the inner product of v comma u. So that is the uh, the definition of e alpha. And similarly, you have the another transformation e beta star. From beta, uh, so here beta alpha is taken from Q to P and beta is taken from Q to P dual, and here we have the uh, similar similar way, but there is a slight change in the definition of beta star. Uh, you have the map E beta stars, uh, and then uh, the elementary orthogonal group is the subgroup of the orthogonal group. It is generated by E alpha and E beta star for. Alpha belongs to home to P and beta belongs to home to P star. So you collect all such linear maps, alpha from Q to P and beta from Q to P dual, and then take the maps E alpha and E beta stars and do all the collection, and then you take the group generated by the all these type of matrices, and this is these are known as uh, Royce elementary orthogonal group. Uh, or Dickens-Siegel Euler Roy group, uh, elementary orthogonal group, and I study in this group. Uh, there are various results which is proved using this group. I will not get into the extendability and the global principle. Uh, this is an interesting uh, result, maybe accessible to you, which is the commutator calculus. So, uh, which is in the elementary linear group, you can see that e i j of a times e i j of b, you can get it as e i j of a plus b. You take two matrices, okay, uh, one one a zero, and then same no e i j e i j it is so one b zero one. So you know it is one a plus b zero one, which is equal to e i j of a plus b. So. Uh, in general, in general, you can prove this, mm. and then you have the commutator of e i j of a and e j k of b, which is equal to e i k of a b, and the commutator is equal to identity if i not equal to l uh, and j not equal to. If we are uh, happy, then so you have three type of relations among the elementary generators in the elementary linear group. Okay, so uh, so in the this group, in this particular group, uh, commutator calculus for uh, this elementary orthogonal DSCR, Dickinson Siegel Euler Roy group, we can uh, get that. I could get that. This uh, transformation have this three type of commutator formula, and then uh, this is I have written only one here. There are fifty-two such relations, so I have written total four uh, relations here. There are fifty-two such relations for this group, and I have to calculate everything. And this is not very easy. Uh, 
I have used the, uh, the programming graph for checking just the examples, the smallest examples, the smallest size is six by six matrix, which you have to check, and with in symbolic computation. So using symbolic computation, I have to do it. Uh, and then I proved it using fixing the basis and uh, uh, thing. And each calculation, which will uh, lead you to like one page or two page calculation here. Uh, even the, uh, you take triple commutator, it will become more and more bigger. So, and the, this group is perfect one thing. Perfect means the commutator of EO is itself. Okay, I think, uh, huh. so one more thing, important thing is normality. And with that, I will stop. So normality of the elementary group is another important problem. So I could prove in 2015 that the elementary orthogonal group is normal in orthogonal group whenever with some condition on the hyperbolic this rank, this rank, HR, HR to the power M. So this is the free, free case, free module case. So M greater than to D plus two where D is dimension max. So in this case, I could prove but uh, the general, more general theorem is it's a, it's a, uh, without the given condition to the hyperbolic rank. So here uh, the rank of P is just greater than equal to two. Uh, here the condition was on the even on the dimension of maxr. There is a dimension of maxr, and then you are taking the uh, condition on the hyperbolic rank. So here rank P is greater than equal to two with that I could get that uh, in a join work with the uh, tau. Uh, I could prove that it's a normal subgroup of the elementary orthogonal group. And for this, uh, all this, uh, we have a basic tool which is called the local global principle, which is a uh, famous uh, Phelan's uh, local global principle. It is the analogous result. This result is the analogous result to that Phelan's local global principle. The analogous result uh, in the case of the BSCR group. So with that, I will uh, finish uh, I think my talk. And uh, these are few uh, references. There are much uh, uh, interesting results ongoing, uh, but we, I think uh, we don't have time to speak about it. Uh, we will stop here. Uh, so basically, one if you want to read about all these groups, you can check the uh, textbook by Han and Romira, the classical groups and key theory, that is one. Uh, that, and uh, the papers of Sustain versus Stain uh, and those people. Uh, and uh, this group in particular, there are not many people are working on it. So we uh, are working. And uh, after Amit Roy, there is problem, papers by Parimala. Uh, and uh, Suresh. Uh, other than that, uh, this group, um, some reactions are working, but that is on the similar groups, but more uh, complicated. So, uh, not more complicated, but uh, I would say more general ways. Over more general ways, then the calculation becomes more uh, complicated. Okay. Thank you all. Now, I welcome Venus Vinu of First PG Mathematics for Vote of Thanks. Einstein caught at that pure mathematics is ray, the poetry of logical ideas. Today, when we are celebrating the Pi Day, it's a great pleasure to be a part of this international conference on algebra and discrete mathematics. In this auspicious occasion, I am grateful to thank Dr. Ampli Ma'am for her marvelous talk on elementary orthogonal groups. She introduced K-theory to us and discussed us about the linear groups. She taught us about the elementary groups, simplectic groups, elemental symplectic groups, orthogonal groups, etc. She familiarized us with the famous theorem by the Russian mathematician Seslin and many other theorems and conjures. Uh, she also discussed as 
about the segal transformation clean transformations roy's elemental tra elementary orthogonal transformation and all ma'am it was a great experience to attend your class i would like to thank you on behalf of our college and our mathematics department thank you so much ma'am it was a great experience finally i would like to thank all others who gathered here for your presence thank you thank you all i i'll leave the meeting thank and thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for the okay see once again thank you ma'am for this enlightening lecture we will now it's time for a short break we will move on to first and second session of paper presentation after the break in first session al103 s kalishwari al105 alanga thomas al106 k kalishwari al107 m mahalakshmi al108 v k aparna pradeep al113 anju a are going to present their papers in session 2 al101 r indu al102 s hema shalini al104 r abhyami al109 m remya khani al110 alka manjal al111 ramsi or dizina al112 rajiv kumar sinha are going to present their papers please get ready for your presentation let us all assemble back sharp by 12:50 pm
À, sao đây ada hari itu sah re, jangan nak kata jangan anniversary tu beraya sah re, kata anniversary tu beraya, ni apa lagi? Dear participants, please rename your name by clicking participants list. Good afternoon, sir.
ஆஃப்டர்நூன் மேம் கேக்குதானே தெரியல ஆஃப்டர்நூன் மேம் டியர் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ட்ஸ் ப்ளீஸ் ரீனேம் யுவர் செல்ஃப் ப்ளீஸ் கிளிக்கிங் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ட் லிஸ்ட் யூ கேன் யூ கேன் ரீனேம் யுவர் செல்ஃப் ப்ளீஸ் டு இட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் மேம் I'm yes, Kali Shwari, ma'am.
Everything around you is numbers. Everything around you is mathematics. Welcome back, everyone. Now, let's move on to the first session of our paper presentation. Uh, dear participants, are you all ready? Okay. In this session, uh, we will start with DM201. In this session, we will start with AL103, then AL105, AL106, AL107, AL108, and AL113. So, we are getting started. Uh, before this, I would like to welcome Dr. Anil Kumar, sir, to introduce the resource person, Prakash, sir, who chair the session. Anil Kumar sir will join us soon. There is some technical errors. Please wait patiently. Okay, now Anus, uh, Dr. Anikumar sir will introduce the resource person, Pragash sir, who chair the session. Good afternoon, everyone. Now we move on to the first session of uh, 
from paper presentation by the participants from various colleges and uh, universities. It's my pleasure to welcome the chair of this session. For this session, we have an eminent person, Dr. Prakasha, Associate Professor in Mathematics at Maharaja's College, Ernakulam. He took PhD from Kerala University. Over the years, he worked as a faculty member in mathematics of uh, various colleges in Kerala. He's the BOS chairman of uh, UG as well as uh, BOS chair member of PG courses in the University of Calicut. He has uh, many publications uh, over his uh, credit. His uh, major research areas are semi rings, uh, semi groups, and uh, graph theory. On behalf of the uh, Mathematics Department of Fatima Mother National College, I welcome you, sir, to chair this session. I also welcome all the participants to this session. Welcome, sir. Okay, let's start the paper presentation session. Uh, our first question number is L103. I invite L103 for the paper presentation on the topic semi modules over a commutative semi ring. Participants, Good please afternoon. note that. Uh, excuse me, please. Uh, participants, please note that uh, eight minutes uh, is given for uh, presentation. Eight minutes is for presentation and two minutes is for the uh, discussion session. Okay, your time starts now. Okay. Today I talk about the topic is semi modulo over a commutative semi ring. Sorry. The study of uh, semi modulo over a semi ring has a long history. In 1966, uh, Yusuf introduced the concept of inverse semi modulo over a semi ring. Since a number of works on semi modulo theory were published, uh, Golan described semi rings and semi modulos over a semi ring. So, since which topic used for the semi linear space in the MV algebraic setting and obtain some semi linear results? So, in this present work, we will investigate. The basis for semi modulus over a commutative semi ring in general. So, but some facts now about bases in linear space have not yet been proved in semi modulus. One of them is whether each basis, uh, basis has the same cardinality. This question has a positive answer in Max's algebra. Joe and Wang investigated the cardinality of a bas uh, basis in the semi linear spaces of n dimensional vectors over joint semi ring and give an answer to the above question in this case. Joe and Wang discussed the cardinality of a basis in semi linear space of n dimensional vectors over a zero sum free semi ring. So chapter one, preliminaries. In this section, we will give some definitions and preliminary lemmas for convenience. So first definition, the so semi ring is an algebraic system. Addition and multiplication is, uh, addition is Mabillian monoid is uh, zero and element and multiplication uh, identity element is one which is connected yeah, by ring-like distributive also, 0 r equal to r0, which is equal excuse to me. 0 for uh, everything. Excuse me, chest number AL103, you are not sharing your screen. Uh, it will be helpful if you share your screen. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, ma'am? Please share your slides. It is not visible. So, sorry, 
என்னோட <laughs> 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 okay so thank you sir so first definition so a semi ring is an algebraic system or a ring with respect to addition and multiplication zero is an additive element and one is multiplicative identity element the connected by ring like distributive is also zero uh, r equal to uh, r zero which is zero the element zero and one are called the zero element and the identity element of r and another uh, definition is the modulo a set a semi ring r is called commutative if ab equal to bo for every a, ab in uh, ring r is called a zero sub three semi ring or an anti ring if this condition is satisfied which one is a plus b equal to zero uh, either it implies a equal to b equal to zero so zero is the least element and one is the greatest element and second condition is so a plus b equal to a cup b for every a and b in r so semi rings are uh, additive and multiplication conditions are further so next definition host is a non empty subset i of a semi ring r is called a left ideal of r if this condition satisfied which one a plus b uh, ring uh, r a belongs to the ideal and i is called an ideal of r if it is left ideal and right ideal of r an ideal of i of r is called maximal ideal if i is subset of j is subset of r for every i is non equal for r we define i plus j is set of all set of all elements a plus b where a is uh, in between i and b is in between j so next definition So let R be a semi ring and element A is called invertible if A B equal to B A equal to one. So U R uh, U of R denotes the set of all invertible elements in R and V of R denotes the set of all positive uh, additive invertible elements in R. So next definition. Let R be a semi ring. Yeah, let R semi modulo is a commutative monoid. So this condition is. Lambda mu of alpha equal to lambda into mu of a, and lambda of alpha plus beta equal to lambda of alpha plus lambda beta. Lambda plus mu a equal to alpha equal to lambda of alpha plus mu into alpha. So next, I give some example. Let R be a semi ring. So nth tuple of R is uh, set of all uh, nth tuple of elements is a n up to a n uh, transpose uh, where a uh, nth tuple elements are conditions n less greater than equal to one define x plus y equal to set of all uh, additive uh, elements x one plus y one and x two y two elements and lambda x elements uh, collection of uh, elements would be lambda x one lambda x two 
up to lambda x n. So next definition. Let M be an R semi-modulo, a non-empty subset. Yes, of M is called a linearly independent state if alpha is does not contain range of sets. So linear uh, independent vectors must be non-zero element. Itself is linear independent because if k v equal to zero for every vector is non-zero condition. Linear dependent conditions is zero. Suppose zero is one of these vectors contains only zero vector and singleton zero, then vectors must be linear dependent sets. So next, uh, one example given: Boolean lattice. Next definition: Let M be an R semi-modulo, a linear independent generating set for M is called a basis for M. And a free generating set for M is called a free basis for M. Next, I can prove one lemma. Let R be a commutative semi-ring. Then for any A comma B belongs to set of all additive invertible elements. So an R belongs to R. Then you have to prove minus. Additive a into minus b equal to a b. The this theorem uh, to be proved by distribution property. So minus. Uh, so you can conclude uh, your result. One minute more, please come. Okay, okay. Our conclusion of uh, paper is some properties and characterizations of the basis for a semi-modulo over a commutative semi-ring, and give some equivalent conditions for a basis to be a free basis in a finitely generator. The different cardinalities for a basis in a finitely generator, free semi-modulo or same cardinality. Okay. Any questions from the audience? You are concluding your uh, or your work is on commutative semi ring. Okay. Okay, sir. So, commutative addition or multiplication? Addition multiplication. Okay. So, uh, Addi pardon? Ah, okay, sir. So, I what happens? Properties. What happens if uh, multiplicative community is commutativity is not there? So, zero is not equal to one is possible condition, sir. The so, additive property is uh, one, and multiplication is uh, one. Sorry, uh, so one and additive is zero. So. The elements zero and one uh, connected by ring-like uh, distributed conditions are so, uh, which is not possible for additive and multiplicative conditions. No, my question is, what happens to the if you are uh, not suppose that uh, multiplication is not commutative? Yes. Uh, multiplication uh, natural uh, some natural numbers are uh, going to one to n so zero is not impossible for this set so then only 
it's not possible thank you thank you next i am like to invite register nampa al105 for her uh, presentation on the topic group lattices over division rings chess nampa al105 your time starts now so can uh, share my screen as one person is sharing there am i audible hello please continue audible. okay good afternoon all here i am going to uh, talk about group lattices over division rings we are familiar with the action of group action on sets from the beginning of our algebra course group actions are important as it gives the representation of the group by bijections on the given structure of the given set and any group action on any algebraic structure gives a representation of the given algebra of the group by the automorphisms of the given algebraic structure uh, case is namburi part one of the most eminent semi group theorists and former hod and professor of department of mathematics of university of kerala introduced and studied the action of group on lattices and he called the resulting structure a group lattice he was interested in the study of group lattices over division rings before moving to that let me give the definition of a group lattice Let G be a group and L be a lattice. An action of G on L is defined as the product G M, where G belongs to G and M belongs to L, which satisfies the following conditions. That is, G H M equal to G H M, E M equal to M for every element in M, and this action should preserve the order, meet, and join of the given lattice. Now, coming to few examples of group lattices. Let G be a group, then. we know that the subgroups form a lattice and l that is denoted by l of g and l of g is a g lattice under conjugation if x is a g set the power set p of x is a g lattice with respect to the product equal to set of all ga where a belongs to a for all g belongs to g and a subset of x and if v is a module over k the submodules of v form a lattice and uh, if rank of v is greater than or equal to 3 this lattice is called an arguisian geomodular lattice if g acts on an arguisian geomodular lattice this is called a g lattice over k and if rho is a representation of g over k then the lattice of submodules of v is a g lattice with respect to the product defined as g w is equal to rho of g w Where this is the set of all G W, where W belongs to rho of G W, where W belongs to G. Now we already mentioned that group actions are important as it gives a representation of the group. Here also we are getting a representation of the group by automorphisms on the lattice. That is given as this theorem. Let G be a group and L is a lattice. If rho is a representation of G by automorphisms of L, then if we define a product G M equal to rho of G M, this will be an action of G on L so that L is a G lattice. And conversely, if If L is a G lattice, the map rho from G to order is such that rho of G M equal to G M is a representation of G by automorphisms of L. Now we are moving to group lattices over division rings. Right? For that, be, um, before moving to that, let me give the preliminaries required for that. A semi-linear transformation f on V is a map f from V to V such that f of V U plus V is equal to f of U plus f of V, and there is an automorphism theta of such that f of A V is uh, the image of A under theta of times f of V for all V belongs to V and A belongs to K. 
and if f is a bijection this is called a semi linear automorphism and semi linear automorphisms of a uh, automorphisms form a group under usual composition and if theta f is the identity uh, automorphism on k this is this will be the linear transformation and the set of all linear automorphisms GL of E is a subgroup of SGL of E. A semi-linear projective representation of a group G is a map row from G to SGL of E such that for each G belongs, GH belongs to G, there exists a scalar alpha of GH such that rho of G rho of H is equal to alpha of GH times rho of GH. And in this talk by a representation of a group G over a division ring, we will be meaning a semi linear projective representation defined like this. If this scalar alpha of GH is the identity element in K star, then this is called a linear representation, a semi linear representation of the group. And if we restrict the codomain to GL of P, this is uh, and rho satisfies this condition, this is called a projective representation of the group. And if both these are satisfied, this is nothing but a linear representation of the group G over K. And we already see that uh, in the previous example that every representation of G over K determines a G lattice. And the converse is also true that is every G lattice over K determines a representation of G over K. And we can see that two equivalent representations always gives the same G lattice. Now coming to shear extensions, if n and g are two groups, a shear extension of n by g is a group H having n as a normal subgroup and H by n is isom the factor group H by n is isomorphic with G. To define a shear extension of n by g, we should have two marks, one from one chi from g to odd n and the other square from g cross g to n, which satisfies these three conditions. If so, if we consider H to be the set of all A, G bar, where A belongs to N and G belongs to G is a group with respect to the binary operation. A, G bar, B, H bar is equal to A, chi of G of B, square, G, H, G, H bar. And this extension is uniquely determined by these two maps. And this is called a factor system for N of G, N by G. And if chi is the constant map to the identity element in odd n, this uh, extension is called a uh, projective extension. And if square is the constant map to the identity in N, this is called a semi-direct product of N and G. And if both these are satisfied, that is both chi and square are constant maps to the respective identity elements, then this is nothing but the direct product of N and G. And we are interested in the shear extension of K star by G. And if rho is a representation, a uh, semi-linear projective representation of G, then this will give rise to a uh, factor system that is determined like this. And therefore, every representation of G over K determines an extension of K by G. And two equivalent representations always determine isomorphic extensions. And we already see that there is a one-one correspondence between G lattices over K and representation of G over K. And here we see that every representation gives an extension of K by G. Therefore, combining these two, what we are getting is every G lattice over K gives an extension of K by G. And the converse of this is also true. That is, every extension determines a, uh, determines a G lattice over K. For that, we should have the definition of a twisted group ring. If H is a uh, extension of K by G, the twisted group ring denoted by K of GH is the free module generated by the sets G to G over K, whose elements are of the form summation A, G, G bar, and the addition and scalar multiplication defined by component wise. And here we can see that uh, the twisted group ring is uniquely determined by the extension. And we, as we already mentioned, this is the main theorem. Uh, every, there is a one-one correspondence between G lattices over K and the extension of K by G. Uh, and this is an example to illustrate this theorem. And we can see that uh, and the few uh, the twisted group in K of G is not an algebra in general. That is, even though K is a field, only if it L is a projective G lattice, then the, then then only the uh, uh, 
K of GH, the twisted group ring will be a algebra. This is all about my presentation. And these are the references that I have used in this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Okay. Uh, one question is, you are, you are all considering here is a division ring. Okay. Yes, Group that is our division ring. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens if you are taking only a ring? Uh, uh, ring. Uh, a uh, ring, sir, actually, then uh, 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 the ring uh, division, if we are considering modules over a division ring, the modules are all uh, 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 free modules. That is, there exists a, uh, a generating set for that module. So that we all, uh, we have the representation, metric representation is possible for the maps there. That is the advantage of using a division ring, uh, apart from you simply using a ring. Here we are using division rings and maps, linear and semi-linear maps on the division rings. So we have the advantage of using representation, metric representation here. That is why we are using division ring. So if you are considering only rings, uh, is it, it, is it is, possible? To... Uh, it is possible actually, but it is somewhat difficult compared to this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay thank you. Thank you, sir. Next presentation is by AL one not six on the topic. On sequences of special diaphantin triples generated through cubic polynomials. Next presentation is by register number AL106. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good. Your presentation is not visible. Good morning to all and all present here. It is my great pleasure to thank you. Thank you, the institution, for organizing such wonderful conferences. Please thank share you. your screen. One second, ma'am. Register number 106. Please share yes, your Ma'am, audible, ma'am. Okay, audible and visible. You can continue. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to honorable present here. It is my great pleasure to thank the institution for organizing such wonderful international e conferences. Myself, Kalishwari, Assistant Professor of Mathematics in Ayanada Janaki Amal College, Shivakasi. I am to three PhD as a part time research scholar under the guidance of Dr. Jake Kandan, sir. My topic is on the sequences of special diaphragm triples generated through cubic polynomials. In mathematics, forming sequences is a more interesting concept. I'm also forming some sequences of polynomials with some definite properties. First, introduction. Diaphragm of Alexandria notice that the numbers 1 by 16, 33 by 16, 17 by 4, and 1 of 5 by 16 have the property that Product of any two numbers is one less than the square of a number. Sets of integers with similar property have been of great interest in decades uh, with a similar property. A sequence of non-negative integers, a sequence of non-negative integers said to be diaphragm m tuple 
if each a i a j plus 1 is a square of an integer the first rational quadruple with rational purpose defined by defined and discovered by dipotence of alexandria my main theme the main theme of this presentation is to study the dipotence set consisting of a cubic polynomials with the property that adding the biquadratic polynomials d of t1 and d of t2 to the product of any two integral polynomials and then summing up get the square of a cubic integral polynomial i have in i have initiated this concept for extending a dipotence set by joining an integer that preserves the joint definite property that is a dipotence pairs to dipotence triples dipotence triples to dipotence triples triples in such a way in the case of extending a triple to quadruple we have been studied by many mathematicians first what is dipotence m triple dipotence m triple let n be a non negative integer non zero integer a set a1 comma a2 comma etc am of distinct positive integer called a special dipotence m triple with the property d of n if a a j for a product plus a i plus a j plus n is a perfect square for all i comma j less than or equal to m and i not equal to j in this presentation we present some sequences of special dipotence triples in generation with the cubic polynomials by employing a uh, biquadratic polynomial d of n our concept let alpha beta b to be two cubic polynomials it is a condition that alpha beta plus alpha plus beta plus d of t1 is a perfect square uh, say eta square d of t1 is a biquadratic integral polynomial and eta is a cubic integral polynomial uh, now i have to extend it to explore its extension i have to find one gamma gamma b another polynomial the same condition this can be represented as a gamma plus a uh, sorry alpha gamma plus alpha plus gamma plus d of 1 is equal to l square and beta gamma plus beta plus gamma plus d of t1 is equal to m square transforming these two equation into l and m in the way that l is equal to mu plus alpha plus 1 into b and m is equal to mu plus beta plus 1 into b using this transformation how to eliminate gamma from these two equation we get to the pell equation Uh, mu square plus alpha plus one into beta plus one into mu square is equal to d of t one minus one. This is the initial condition that mu naught is equal to one, and the mu naught is equal to uh, square root of such uh, uh, expression. These the values can be these mu naught and mu naught uh, can be used to pursue the polynomials gamma, satisfying the property d of t one. Now we attain a polynomial gamma uh, with the property. with the definite property that is alpha comma beta comma gamma is a special dipotence triple with the property now i have to construct the sequence of dipotence triples with the property d of t1 my d of t1 here i my d of t1 is n power 4 plus 1 so for distinct pair of cubic polynomials i have to take a distinct pair um, and d of t1 is n power 4 plus 1 first um, i i have taken two possibility the rema possibility to d of c1 and d of c2 uh, in d of c1 i formulate four choices uh, that is i have to uh, sequ sequencing the way uh, for the sequence of three polynomials the examine extensibility as the special dipotence triple specifying the property d of c1 is equal to n power 4 plus 1 first i have to take alpha beta next uh, my work is to find gamma that gamma will satisfy the property alpha gamma plus alpha plus gamma plus d of t1 is equal to some square and the beta beta gamma plus beta plus gamma plus d of t1 is equal to some square so gamma p another cubic cubic polynomial with the same property now i have to eliminate uh, this transformation uh, eliminate this equation by uh, by transforming uh, by transforming the l and m Uh, next, I uh, I got a Pellin equation with the initial conditions. This value can be used to imply gamma. Uh, so I have to find the gamma as four n cube plus eight n square plus seven. Next, uh, next uh, I have to find the sequence. So next I have to check beta and this gamma. So uh, beta and gamma. Uh, so for the distinct pairs, beta and gamma, I find the 
beta alpha beta gamma delta next i have to find delta uh, in the same procedure i have to follow in uh, so mu mu n cube plus c n square plus 1 comma 4 n cube plus 8 n square plus 7 comma 9 n cube plus 21 n square plus 17 is a special dipartite triple with a this property d of n power 4 plus 1 next uh, third step i have to take gamma and the delta i form a omega so let gamma is equal to 4 n cube plus 8 n square plus 7 delta is equal to 9 n cube plus 21 n square plus 17 i find the omega as 25 n cube plus 55 n square plus 49 with this property d of n power 4 plus 1 next i found the another polynomial uh with the proper uh, with the uh, with the given condition that uh, delta and omega so delta is equal to 9 n cube plus 21 n square plus 17 sorry 9 n cube plus 21 n square plus 17 omega is equal to 25 n cube plus 55 n square plus 49 next i find uh, the sigma 64 n cube plus 144 n square plus 127 this are my experimental analysis uh, now my work is finding the sequences of polynomials by adding some suitable biquadratic polynomial next i have to add some some other suitable biquadratic polynomial and uh, extend my work uh, so uh, same uh, same procedure following alpha beta i found gamma beta gamma i found a delta uh, beta gamma delta i found a omega omega delta omega i found sigma so i conclude that uh, this 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 is my also my experimental analysis so i conclude that uh, i have to generate i have to generate this type of uh, uh, quadratic polynomial uh, sorry cubic polynomials and we have to extend the triple into quadruple in this presentation we conclude that for the particular classes of biquadratic polynomials we cannot extend the special dipartite triple for, for cubic polynomials into dipartite q triple this is a definite property these are my references and thank you okay any questions from the audience So, uh, give an example of a diffending three triple and special diffending three triple. Sir, can you give a uh, example for diffending three triple and special di uh, special diffending three triple? One by sixteen, thirty three by sixteen, and seventeen by four is the uh, diffending triple, sir. Oh, uh, one by sixteen, thirty three by sixteen, seventeen by four. Okay, is it special diffending three triple? No, sir. No, sir. No. Oh no, sir. Uh, a so special dipartite triple we have some property. Uh, oh. In the dipartite triple, we have to product two polynomials and adding one. But in oh. special dipartite triple, uh, product uh, two polynomials and adding such plus adding some polynomial, uh, some polynomial. So uh, give such an example if it is in. Sir, you can. Can you give such a special dipartite three triple? Ah yes, sir. Please. Okay, sir. Uh, sir. Yes. Two comma zero comma five, which is oh. the property minus one, sir. Okay. So adding two, two. Then oh. plus. Adding two, two plus two four, four plus one is equal to five. So the property satisfied. Adding two polyn, adding two numbers two, then product zero. So two plus zero two, two minus one one, which is equal to one square. Sir, next okay. taking zero and five, oh. zero into five zero, zero plus five, five five minus one four, so which is equal to two square. Sir. Okay. And at the same time, I'm taking two five, so uh, multiplying two two into five ten, ten plus two plus five seven, so ten plus seven seventeen, seventeen minus one sixteen, so sixteen is equal to four square, sir. Okay, okay, sir. So one more question is you are uh, using the term experimental analysis. So, sir. Uh, 
you are using the uh, term uh, the table is given by uh, experimental analysis uh, how yes sir what do you mean by that experimental analysis sir i have to form a sequence pardon so it's a present sir pardon please Sandeep? one second sir, i can hear find the sequence uh, i have sir can you hear oh, okay okay please Oh, I found the sequence, sir. The context showed in table. Okay, that that I know. Uh, that uh, experimental analysis, uh, the term you used. So, uh, how you uh, construct such uh, triples or uh, oh, just I... doing some numbers or how? Uh, just taken two cubic polynomials. Okay. So you need so to call numbers. I... I did the dipartite triple. Ah. So I just changed some property, uh, special dipartite triple, okay. and the constructor. Sir. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Next test number. L one not seven on some annotations on an almost equilateral triangle. Good morning, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, but you are not sharing your screen. Uh, one minute, ma'am. Please, please make it fast. Yeah, okay, ma'am, one minute. Ma'am, shall I present next to ma'am? What happened? Uh, screen uh, sharing option is not uh, working, ma'am, properly. So, uh... Okay, uh, we will move on to the next presentation. L108 on the topic visualization for Petrov or unitary group. Uh, please, your audio, uh, audio is very low. So, sorry. 
can you please tell is it fine now yeah okay okay oh, okay okay yes you may start the presentation yes it is okay fine. okay okay so my minute is my screen visible Is it visible? Visible, visible. You can continue. Yes. Good afternoon, all. Here I am presenting our work on visualization for Petro's Odd Unitary Group. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Dr. Ambali A. A. In this, uh, in 2005, VA Petro introduced certain type of groups known as Odd Unitary Groups, which is a generalization of all known classical groups and classical like groups. Uh, Ambali, I am told about classical groups. This is a generalization of all such groups. Uh, it is introduced by VA Petro, and in 1976, Ellen Wasserstein defined certain matrices such that, given an alternating matrix, matrix phi, uh, he defined certain uh, matrices which can be modified to symplectic matrices. In 2016, Chattopadhyaya and Rao used this construction for defining relative elementary symplectic group with respect to a given alternating matrix. And in in a recent work, Ambali and Rao defined Wasserstein type matrices for DSCR elementary orthogonal group. Here I am uh, present. Here I am presenting our work on uh, on analogous construction for Petro's odd elementary hyperbolic unitary group. First of all, let us see what a odd unitary group is. For defining that, it was introduced by V. A. Petro in two thousand five. For defining that, take an associative ring with unity together with a pseudo involution sigma. That is pseudo involution mean, means a map from R to R. R maps to R bar satisfying this condition: R one, R two bar is R two bar one bar inverse R one bar, and R double bar should be R. If these conditions are satisfied, this map is called a pseudo involution. We are taking an associative ring with unity together with a pseudo involution, and take a right R module with an anti-Hermitian form on it. Anti-Hermitian uh, form means and by additive map from V cross V to R satisfying this condition. First component is scalar R comes out as R bar one bar inverse, and in the second component it acts linearly. And in the product of U, uh, U V should be minus of V U bar for all U V and V. If this condition are satisfied, this is called a anti-Hermitian form. We are taking a right R module together with a, an anti-Hermitian form on it. And uh, we, uh, if we are taking such a V, then we can make V cross R into a group by defining a group operation like this. U R addition defined. If this addition is defined like this, U R plus V S is First component just add the first component and the second component is R plus S plus inner product of U V. Uh, such a uh, such a by such defining such an addition we can make this H to a group and this group is called the Heisenberg group of the form B. And there is some notions, some definitions and all. This we can see that the group, uh, ring R acts on the Heisenberg group by this action. An element S acting on U R will give U S S bar one bar inverse R S. And there is a notion of trace map. Trace map is defined by R minus R bar minus U U, and uh, there is two important subgroups of the Heisenberg group defined by L min and L max. L min is set of all elements of the Heisenberg group of this form zero R plus R bar, and L max is theta in H such that uh, those elements in the Heisenberg group whose whose trace is zero. And uh, this uh, Petro defined an odd form parameter as a subgroup of the Heisenberg group which lies between this L min and L max. Uh, we can see that this L min and L max are subgroups of the Heisenberg group, and uh, uh, those subgroups which lies in between these two subgroups and which is stable under the action of the ring R. If this condition is satisfied, then it is said to be an odd form parameter. A right R module V together with an odd form parameter is said to be an odd quadratic space. And two isometries from two uh, isometries between two, uh, isometries from one odd quadratic space V L to another V dash L prime. Is said to be equivalent modulo L prime if it satisfies this expression. If it satisfies this condition, then it is said to be equivalent modulo L prime. And Petro defined the odd unitary group as the group of all bijective isometries on B, which are congruent to identity map modulo this odd form parameter L. Uh, this is the Petro's odd unitary group. And Petro also defined in the same paper. Petro defined. Some elementary subgroup of this, or uh, as in the case of classical groups, after defining classical groups, we have elementary subgroups of it. Like that, Petrov defined elementary subgroup of odd unitary group. For defining that, he considered Euclid's Eagle Dixon transfection. These are transfections of the form T U V R of W defined by this map, where this U and V are elements. 
uh, from V satisfying the condition inner product of U V equal to zero. U zero belongs to L and V R belongs to L. And Petro proved that after defining this transaction, Petro proved proved that this transaction lies in the odd unitary group. And now uh, for our purpose, we are taking an odd quadratic form. Uh, we are quadratic an odd quadratic form with basis uh, even e minus one etc. E m e minus one and together with this is two m plus n uh, elements are there and so it, it, this should satisfy e i e minus i equal to one and e i e j zero for i equal to one to m and i not equal to j and the unitary group in this case is called odd hyperbolic unitary group and is denoted by u two m of r f and by petrov defined elementary transitions are transitions on v of this particular form tij of r and ti of u are defined by these expressions this is of the form tuv of a uh, therefore this belongs to the esv transitions and the group generated by these elementary transitions are called uh, odd elementary hyperbolic unitary group it is denoted by eu2m of r now Petrov also in that paper Petrov proved that this group, uh, the odd elementary hyperbolic unitary group, is uh, defined uh, coincide with the group generated by elements of the form T e plus or minus one v of a, where this v satisfies e a v satisfies this condition, and uh, by doing some calculation we can uh, reformulate that result in this form. It is generated by T plus or minus one v of a, where we satisfies the same condition. And here this is our work. For uh, first of all, for before uh, telling our work, uh, first of all, uh, you should know what the Wasserstein construction is. For that, uh, Wasserstein for uh, given an invertible alternative matrix phi of size two n, Wasserstein uh, expressed that in this form, where this C is uh, some n two n minus one row length uh, row of length two n minus one, and this is a column and like that. U is a two n minus one by two n minus one matrix. He expressed phi in this form, and phi inverse will have this form. And he defined two matrices alpha and beta as like this, and proved that one zero v transpose alpha and one v zero beta belongs to the elementary group as well as symplectic group with respect to phi. We are doing such a construction for Petrov's odd elementary hyperbolic unitary group. For that, uh, we express the Petrov four matrix for Petrov's group in this form: psi n tilde per phi, where phi is the four matrix for v not. V not is a space generated by v one up to v n. And psi r tilde is defined like this: zero one minus one bar zero blocks uh, per uh, blocks of uh, this uh, this form. Each block two by two blocks, and uh, we take per of that. And this psi can be written in the we uh, wrote psi in this form: zero c minus one bar c transpose mu, where mu has this form, and uh, computed the inverse in this form, where uh, this uh, o is of this form, and. After that, we define two matrices alpha and beta by these expressions and prove certain result analogous to the Wasserstein construction. These are the results. Uh, we prove that these uh, groups belongs to elementary group, and if it satisfies the vector V satisfies these two conditions, then we can prove that this uh, L V and L V star belongs to Petrov's odd unitary group, as well as these these two elements L V and L L V star generates the Petrov's odd unitary group. This is the main results in our in the result in our paper, and these are the references. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Okay. So you are considering Petrov's odd unitary group. Yes. Uh, it's a particular kind of group, which is a generalization of all classical groups. Classic by classical groups, I mean elementary, symplectic, and orthogonal groups. Uh, these are a generalization of such a concept. So, uh, what is the in few uh, one or two sentences? Can you uh, differentiate uh, between odd unitary group and unitary group? Yes, yes. Because in the odd, in the case of unitary, in the study of unitary groups and all, the even case was not considered. This odd unitary group means not only the rank should be odd, it should be not necessarily even. Like we are, uh, we are dealing with the uh, as if we are dealing with the usual orthogonal group. Everywhere we are studying the odd dim even dimensional orthogonal group, O two n of R and all. And uh, the study of odd dimensional orthogonal group is somewhat different. And 
uh, this petrov defines such a construction so that it should cover all the cases odd cases as well as even cases therefore uh, he named this as odd unitary group and define certain construction but in particular this is uh, just a minute i will take that definition <coughs> petrov unitary group we are taking a pseudo involution but if we are taking this pseudo involution in particular form r bar we are taking say, say r bar equal to r or r bar equal to minus r etc then we will get the usual unitary group r bar is minus if we are taking in we are we will get the usual classical groups in particular if we take r bar is minus r then we will get the usual unitary group this is a generalization of that concept okay Uh, one more question is uh, lastly you proved that uh, group generated by l of e and uh, l of e star oh, last one okay okay is congruent to petrov's group uh, it it was actually con first we got the result the, the the group generated by lv and lv star are congruent to petrov's group but this paper is already communicated after getting the review uh, and uh, doing some changes we got the much better result that this group actually lv and lv star generates the petrov's group that is the group generated by lv and lv lv star is same as petrov's group earlier we got it is congruent to petrov's group but now doing some revision we got that this is same as petrov's group okay thank you thank you thank you next chess number is l113 on the topic categories of principal left and right ideals of finite rank bounded operator semi group on hilbert space sir one second i will now stop sharing okay. good afternoon everyone I am going to speak on ideal categories of finite rank bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Cases number one are defined. The category of principal left ideals and the right ideals are of a small and arbitrary regular regular semi group S. By definition, R of S equal to L of S opposite. We consider the regular semi group S of finite rank bounded operators on a Hilbert space H. In this case, the objects in L of S and R of S are corresponding ideals in normed algebra S. So we can make each concept into a normed space using adjoint. Uh, we can prove that L of S and R of S with the sub subobject, subobjects are isomorphic. And if H is a real Hilbert space, uh, this isomorphism also preserves the normed space structure of concepts. A semigroup S is a non-empty set S with an associative binary operation. If S is a semigroup, then we can construct a semigroup S opposite by defining x star y equal to y x, where y x is the binary operation on S. If there is a statement about S, then uh, by replacing operation on S by operation on S opposite, we can uh, find we can. Find a statement the t opposite about s opposite. The statement the t and the t opposite. The relation between the statement the t and the t opposite is called the left right duality. A non-empty subset I of a semigroup S is said to be left ideal of S if S I belongs to I for all S belongs to S and I belongs to I. If A belongs to S, the principal left ideal generated by A is S one A equal to S A union set to A. A linear space I of a normed space algebra is said to be left ideal if A I belongs to I for all A belongs to A and I belongs to I. Uh, by duality, uh, we can define corresponding right ideals. Uh, for an operator T on a Hilbert space H, uh, R of T denotes the range space of T instead of T denotes the zero space of T. It is said to be a finite rank operator if R of T is a finite rank subspace of H. Uh, let S denote the set of all finite rank bounded operators on H. Uh, then S is a linear space under the pointwise operations, uh, under these pointwise operations. Uh, and the uh, uh, operator norm is a norm on S. Uh, also, S is a normed algebra under the binary operation T1, T2 of X equal to T2 of T1 of X for all X belongs to H. Idempotence in S are projections in S. Uh, if A is a closed subspace of H, then P A denotes the orthogonal projection of H onto A. If T belongs to S, then the adjoint T star also belongs to S. 
let S be a semi group. X belongs to S is said to be regular. If there exists X dash belongs to S such that X X dash X equal to X. If every element of S is regular, then S is called a regular semi group. If A is a regular element of a semi group S, then S one A and A S one will be generated by idempotent elements in S. The semi group S of a finite trunk bounded operators on a Hilbert space H is a regular semi group. For T1 and T2 in S, the principal left and the right ideals satisfies these conditions, uh, which is related to its uh, range space and uh, zero space. A category C is said to be pre order. If for any object P and P dash, the home set contains at most one morphism. Uh, in this case, we can define a quasi order on the object class by P less than P dash if and only if its form set is non empty. If this relation is a partial order, then P is said to be a strict pre order. If C is a category uh, which has a, a, a subcategory uh, which is a strict pre order uh, with the same object set uh, which also satisfies these two conditions, uh, then the pair CP is a category with the sub objects. Morphisms in P are called inclusions in C. Uh, if P is uh, less than P dash, P is called a subobject of P dash. Uh, for two categories, CP and D2 uh, with the subobjects, uh, CP and uh, they are said to be isomorphic. If there is a category isomorphism F from C to D such that F restricted to P uh, is an isomorphism from P to Q. A normal factorization of a morphism in F in C uh, is a factorization of the form F equal to Q composite U composite J, where Q is a retraction, U is an isomorphism, and J is an inclusion. Let S be a regular semi group. The category of principal left ideal cell of S is defined as objects are SE where E is an item written in S. For SC and SF, morphisms from SC to SF are row of EUF where U belongs to ESF, which maps X to XU for all X belongs to SC. Here the composition is defined in this way. Uh, this is the identity on SC. Uh, by duality, we can define the category of right ideals uh, by R of S equal to L of S opposite. The category of principal left and right ideals uh, are categories with the sub objects uh, in which uh, inclusions are the usual set inclusion. For the following result, assume that uh, S denote the semi group of finite rank bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Uh, for L of S, uh, the objects are SPA and uh, R of S, the objects are uh, PAS, where A is a finite dimension subspace of H. Uh, PA denotes the orthogonal projection of H onto A. SPA equal to set of a T belongs to S such that the uh, range space of T is a subspace of A. And it is a left ideal in the norm algebra S. Uh, PAS equal to set of a T belongs to S such that uh, A per P is a subspace of Z of T, uh, which is equal to set of a T belongs to S such that uh, T star at the end of T belongs to SPA. Uh, uh, which is a right ideal in the norm algebra S. If A and B are finite dimensional subspaces of H, uh, then L of S, L of S of S P S P B equal to set of a row of P A T P B such that T in S satisfies these conditions, uh, which is a normed space, and R of S of P A S P B S equal to a set of a lambda of P A T P B such that row of P B T P P A belongs to L of S of S P B S P A, which is equal to set of all lambda of P A T P B such that T in S satisfies these conditions, which is equal to set of all lambda of P A T P B such that row of P A T star P B belongs to L of S of S P A S P B, which is also a normed space. In L of S, S P A is a subobject of S P B. If and only if A is a subspace of B, if A is a subspace of B, then uh, row of P, B, P, A, P, A is a right inverse of the inclusion row of P, A, P, A, P, B. Uh, similarly, uh, in L, R of S, the P, A, P, A, S is a subobject of P, B, S, if and only if A is a subspace of B, and if A is a subspace of B, then lambda of P, B, P, A, P, A is a right inverse of the inclusion lambda of P, A, P, A, P, B. Uh, for example, uh, if B is a uh, xy plane in R3 and A is any subspace of xy plane in R3, then SPA is a subobject of SPB and PAS is a subobject of PBS. If a row of PA, T, P, B is a morphism from SPA to SPB, then this is a normal factorization of row of PA, T, P, B, where C equal to sort of T perp and B equal to R of T. Uh, by duality, we can say that this is a normal factorization of lambda of PBTPA. Uh, 
uh, the categories L of S and R of S with the suboptic isomorphic. Uh, this isomorphism is also a subjective conjugate linear isometry from the home set L of S S P S P B of L of S onto the home set R of S of P A S P B S of R of S. The isomorphism is defined by P of S P equal to P A S and the F of rho of P A T P B equal to lambda of P A T star P. References. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, if the Hilbert space is finite dimensional, uh, mm -hmm. what 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 will you conclude? Uh, then S is uh, then S is the set of all linear transformations on H. S is. What I consider is the set of all linear transformations on it. Okay. And uh, uh, your, uh, your work is on real Hilbert space, isn't it? Uh, it need, need not be real. Okay, so um, categories of L, LS and RS is suburbs are isomorphic, and if it is a real Hilbert space. Uh, so, what happens if uh, Hilbert space is not real? Uh, it is not real. We can find an isomorphism from L of S to R of S, uh, but uh, the, uh, we uh, there is uh, from home set between home sets uh, there exists a conjugate linear isometry. Okay. Uh, because uh, KT maps to KT uh, the whole uh, the adjoint of KT is K conjugate T star. Okay, fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, register number AL107. Some on the topic, some annotations on almost equilateral triangle. Um, is my screen visible? Ah, yes, visible, visible. Yeah, okay, sir. Uh, I am Emma Halakshmi, a research scholar from Nayanada Janaki Mahal College, Sivahasi. My title is Some Annotations on Almost Equilateral Triangle. So, first, let me uh, introduce the almost uh, equilateral triangle. It is a type of triangle in which the sides are given as n, n, n plus 1 or uh, n, n, n minus 1, where uh, n is any natural number greater than 1, as in the case for n, n, n minus 1. So, uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation, uh, I, I present uh, some properties of almost equilateral triangles are collecting some almost equilateral triangles uh, with certain properties. So these are my preliminary work. Uh, here the, I have to solve the Pelly equation, x square minus 3y square equal to 1. Uh, so the fra continued fraction of root 3 is given us and the least uh, solution. And these are the recurrence relation which generates the solutions x comma y. This, uh, the lemma one is used to find all the solutions of m square minus 3 l square equal to 4. So by using the lemma one, the lemma two was derived. So next preliminary work is, uh, I have the two terms, 3n plus 1 and n minus 1. Here I have to find uh, all the possibilities for the product of 3n plus 1 into n minus 1 is a perfect square. In this lemma, I, uh, I proved that uh, the uh, 3n plus 1 and n minus 1 is not, each of is not a perfect square. Uh, sorry, each of is not a perfect square. Uh, when each of is not a perfect square, the product doesn't produce a perfect square. So the only possible case is the each of the term must be a perfect square. So this is proved in the lemma 3. So for proving this lemma, I obtained the case uh, two cases. So in the case 1, 3n plus 1 is factorized this following and n minus 1 have this following factorization uh, where, a, uh, where the conditions for a and b and a pk qks are mentioned here and all the powers are odd so that the product only gives a perfect square. 
by taking congruence modulo p1 or p2 or whatever the primes uh, we obtain a contradiction now in case 2 3n plus 1 and n minus 1 both having a 3 as a factor so in this case also we obtain a contradiction now move on to main results my first theorem is uh, i have to find all almost equilateral triangles with integer area so in uh, this theorem proves that uh, if T1 is almost equilateral triangle with sides n, n, n plus 1, then uh, T1 has an integer area if and only if n must take this following uh, following cases where uh, u and v are given in that 2 plus root 3 and 2 minus root 3. Uh, the proof was uh, taken as by using Heron's formula, the area is obtained. And, uh, and using the fact that area is an integer, the square root term is also an integer. By using the lemma 3, each term must be a perfect square. So by solving this, we obtain the Pell equation as in lemma 2, m square minus 3l square equal to 4. By solving this equation, we obtain the required values of n. As in the converse case also, suppose the value of n holds, we have to prove that the area is an integer. So here clearly uh, this area is an integer by uh, using the binomial expansion of uh, u power k minus b power k. Now, next theorem is uh, as the analog of the theorem 1. That is, T2 is a triangle having uh, sides n, n, n minus 1. It has no, uh, it, uh, it doesn't have any integer area. So the proof is uh, based on the using uh, usage of congruences. As in the similar case for theorem 1, the area is found by using the Heron's formula. And then uh, taking congruence model O3, we apply a contradiction. So next, uh, theorem 3 connects uh, area with altitude. So in this theorem, uh, I have to collect all almost equilateral triangles uh, with area same as altitude. Here I use the formula area is equal to half into base into height and uh, equate it with the area by uh, finding in the Heron's formula. First case, I, I taking uh, base as n plus 1. The second case, uh, I take base as n minus 1. The similar work repeats for uh, the triangle with n, n, n minus 1 sides. Uh, so finally, in this lemma, we conclude that there are exactly four almost equilateral triangles uh, with the given property. Uh, next theorem four is uh, here also the same work. I have to collect all almost equilateral triangles with area equal to perimeter. In this case, we obtain exactly only one uh, almost equilateral triangle. Uh, the proof moves us uh, case one and case two. The first case deals with uh, sides n, n, n minus one and the others, uh, other case deals with n, n, n minus one. By equating area and perimeter, we apply a quadratic equation. Uh, in case one, the quad, uh, sorry cubic equation. In case one, the cubic equation uh, doesn't be solved over is it? Whereas the case two has a solution. So case two only produces the required almost equilateral triangle. Uh, next theorem deals with uh, uh, integer in radius and the circum radius. As in theorem one, here also we have collect uh, almost equilateral triangles with the in radius and the circum radius integers. So by using the formula of in radius, uh, we proved that uh, there are no almost equilateral triangle uh, with sides n, n, n minus 1 having in radius and the circum radius in integers. So the proof is uh, given here. Here uh, for the circum radius proof, r equal to x, y, z by 4a. By using that formula, uh, we, uh, we prove the result uh, theorem 5. Uh, next theorem deals with the height of an almost equilateral triangle. Uh, it is just by applying uh, Pythagoras theorem. So uh, this is the corollary of theorem 6. Uh, whenever area of an almost equilateral triangle is integer, its height is also an integer. Uh, next theorem deals with uh, the area, height of an almost equilateral triangle with sides n, n, n minus 1. Uh, so already I mentioned uh, in this paper, uh, we saw some uh, results or properties connecting the almost equilateral triangles. So one uh, one may search, uh, try for another shapes or taking another sites also. Uh, these are my references. Thank you. Any question? <clears throat> So, uh, yes, sir. So first, uh, you take uh, the slide three. That is lemma okay, one. Sir. Lemma one. Okay, sir. One minute. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, here, uh, third 
third one is for k greater than or equal to 1 xk plus 1 yes sir what is x uh, what uh, what is xk xk plus 1 yk etc uh they are the solutions of the equation x square minus 3 y square equal to 1 sir so k is for k greater than or equal to 1 here uh, k is you are using for uh just to find the solutions of that equation in recurrence form sir uh so you may take uh, x n as a sequence of the solutions xk uh, x square minus 3y square equal to 1 then the terms of the sequence are generated by using this formula okay. now you are uh, uh, so many times using heron formula uh, what is it yes sir uh, heron's formula is used to obtain uh, area of a triangle uh, by using the semi perimeter of that sir uh, shall i mention it? yes sir uh you mentioned uh, that her uh, her own formula in this in your paper no sir i didn't mention uh just only give the final result only sir okay what is it her own formula uh her own formula is uh, suppose uh, if a b c are sides of a triangle and s is its perimeter then uh, the area is found as uh, square root of s into s minus a into s minus b into s minus c sir okay so okay thank you okay thank you sir the first session of the paper presentation is over prakash sir would you like to share with us something oh, okay so first of all i thank the organizers for giving me to share the uh, share this session uh thank you especially for uh, your hod and and uh, anis and uh, coordinator roshni uh, then a few words uh, about the, your uh, the presentation is uh, all participants have done uh, presented very well uh, one suggestion is that <clears throat> a uh, few slides were uh, so much um, more content uh, are in one slide so it is not uh, it is not fair because uh, for the viewers it is uh, you should uh, uh, content should be less in one slide but uh, many of the slides were so much of contents in one slide so uh, next time when you present uh, this uh, you should mo uh, give more importance to your slides also Uh, other topics were selected uh, uh, all the topics were nice and uh, very uh, uh, appreciable so all the best for all the part uh, all the presenters uh, thank you thank you prakash sir now now i would like to invite anina shibu third dc match for the vote of thanks It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of Fatima Mada National College Department of Mathematics, and the entire fraternity of management here, extend my very sincere gratitude to you, sir. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us today and helping us to make this event a grand success. Thank you, one and all. now let us move on to the second session of our paper presentation for this uh, i would like to invite dr anil kumar sir to invite the chair good afternoon everyone now we move on the second session of uh, paper presentation it's my pleasure to welcome the chair of the second session for this session we have an eminent person dr archana vp assistant professor in mathematics at mmns college kottayam she took phd from university of kerala she worked as a faculty member in mathematics at mg college trivandrum she she is also the program officer of a national service scheme at mmns college kottayam her major research area is fuzzy languages on behalf of the mathematics department of fatima mata national college i welcome you ma'am to chair this session welcome ma'am thank you sir
Is it audible, sir? Hello? Yes. Venus, please. Now we are moving on to the second session of paper presentation. First, register number is AL101. The first register number is AL101. Mm, yes, ma'am. AL101 may start yes, the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon and I will gather here. Myself are Indu from Ayanada Janahimal College, Sivagasi. Now I am going to talk about an exponential diffundus equation for messing primes. The main abstract of this in this paper is an exponential diffundus equation is one of the special form of diffundus equation in which the variable occur in exponent. So far, there exists some good exploration regarding such equations. Like those here of our atom, which makes use of the Messini primes to resolve state such equations given below. This paper shows the extra solutions set for these equations along with the proof. Next, we see the some introductions of the number theory, Diophantus equations, and etc. First, number theory is also called as the Q1 of mathematics and is also the branch of pure mathematics devoted to the study of uh, natural numbers and the integers. It is the theory, uh, theoretical part tries to devise an argument which gives the conclusions answer to the questions. Uh, next, we see the Metzen's prime. Uh, the Metzen prime is the prime number that is one less than a power of two. Uh, this is the form of m1 equal to two power n minus one for some integer n. Next, we see the uh, Mersenne's prime uh, are someti sometimes defined to have the additional requirement that n must be prime equivalently they, that they are called the Mersenne's prime numbers. Uh, namely, those numbers who binary representations contain a prime number of 1 and uh, no zeros. Next, we see the exponential diffundus equations, uh, which is uh, one in which unknowns can appear in the exponent. Uh, Next, next we see the sum of the results and the properties which are used in the below theorems. First, the proportion Catalan's uh, conjecture, uh, which tells that the equation a power x minus b power y equal to one. Uh, here, uh, a comma b comma x comma y, which is belongs to natural number, and the minimum of a comma b comma x comma y greater than one uh, has the only solutions uh, three comma two comma two comma three. The below lemmas are needed for bill. Uh, Next, the followed theorems. First, the lemma, 3 comma 3 is the unique solutions for x comma z for the Diophantus equation. 2 power x plus 1 is equal to z square, where x and z are non-negative integers, uh, which are proved by the x can be split into two ways uh, when x is equal to 0 and x is greater than or equal to 1. Next, we see the lemma. There exist no non-negative integral solutions for the Diophantus equation. 1 plus 31 power, power y which is equal to z square, which is also proved by uh, the case of uh, y is greater than or equal to 1 and y equal to 0. Next, we see that the exponential Diophantus equation 1 plus 127 power y is equal to z square has no solutions in the union of natural number and the singleton zeros. Next, we see the sum of the theorems. First theorem tells that uh, the Diophantus equation is 2 power x plus 31 power y is equal to z square with the Mersenne uh, primes as a only solution 3 comma 0 comma 3 and 7 comma 2 comma 34 in, the un in union of natural number and the singleton 0. First, the proof followed by uh, x, e x is split into uh, three categories. Uh, when x is equal to 0, we get a uh, solution, a non negative integral solution. When x is equal to 1, there is a no solution for this case. Uh, at the same time, x is, x is greater, than or, greater than 1, uh, we get the two modulos, 2 power x congruence to 0 and mod 4, and also z square congruence to 1 and mod 4. By the properties of congruence, uh, we get 31 power uh, y, which is congruence to 1 mod 4. 
Next, we choose the y is even. Uh, that means uh, y equal to 2m. Uh, if uh, m equal to 0 and we get y equal to 0. Uh, by the previous lemma, uh, 1 says that 3, comma, 3 is the unique solutions for x, comma, z uh, for the Diophantus equation. Uh, by using this lemma, uh, we get uh, 3, comma, 0, comma, 3 is the solution. Next, uh, for uh, assume m greater than or equal to 0, we get 7, 2, 3, 3 is the solution. Uh, these two are the feasible, only feasible solution for the Diophantus equation. 2 power x plus 31, 31 power y is equal to z square. Next, we see the theorem 2. The only possible non-negative integral solution for Diophantus equation, 2 power x plus 1, 2, 7 power y, which is equal to z square, are 3, 0, 3 and 9, 2, 1, 2, 9. Uh, here uh, we split the similar way we split the cases into three uh, when x is equal to zero uh, by using lemma lemma we get a one plus one twenty seven uh, power y is equal to z square has no solution in uh, union of natural number and the singleton zero when uh, is x is equal to zero we reduce the equations into uh, z square minus two is equal to one two seven power y uh, we get uh, two root two uh, is equal to 1 to 7 power u and 1 to 7 power y minus 2 u minus 1. Uh, here uh, y, u equal to 0 is the only possible value. Uh, here we cannot get the integer solutions because the rational number u, uh, root 2 is exist. Uh, therefore, uh, for this case, when x is equal to 1, we cannot get the integer solution. Next, when x, x is greater than 1, uh, we get the similar way of uh, uh, theorem 1, uh, the mod, the congruence of modulus. Next, uh, here we get the uh, solutions, feasible solutions, 3, 0, 3 and 9, 2, 129 are the feasible solutions for this above equations. Next, we th see the theorem 3. Uh, theorem 3 says that uh, 3, 0, 3 and 15, 2, 8193 is the only possible solutions for the Diophantus equation 2 power x plus 8191 power y, which is equal to z square, where x, y, z belongs to a union of natural number and the single tension. Uh, here also, when x is equal to 0 by Catalan proportion and the conjecture, uh, when y must be equals to 1, we get z square equal to 8192, which is not a perfect square because the unit. Uh, un only digit is uh, 2. Therefore, no solution exists in this case. X is equal to 0. When X is equal to when X is equal to 2, uh, we get the Z square equal to 8193, which is not valid. Since the unit digit uh, which is uh, 3, therefore, uh, which is not valid. Uh, then uh, we see that case 3 when X is greater than 1. Uh, here we get the 15, 2, 893 is the solutions in uh, union of natural number and the single tenses. Therefore, these two are the only solutions for the Diophantus equation. 2 power x plus 8191 power y is equal to z square. That's all. Uh, here, uh, the many scholars have attempted to solve the Diophantus equations of the form p power x plus q power y is equal to z square in recent years. Here, the P and Q are the prime, and X, Y, uh, Z are non-integers, non-negative integers. Uh, in this paper, we are discussing the solutions of Diophantus equation with Messiaen prime. These are the references. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions from the audience? Okay, what is the most motivation behind your uh, this work? Is there any motivation? Um, we have to solve the Diophantus equations by using some Mersenne's prime maps in the form of two power n minus one mom. For choosing this area, is there any particular aim? For finding the unknowns, ma'am, unknowns variables. Okay.
okay thank you for the presentation thank you ma'am next register number is al102 al102 yes ma'am ma'am is my screen is visible yes thank you ma'am good afternoon to all my name is hema shalini i am a MSc Mathematics student in Ayanada Janakimal College, Sivakasi. My topic is Solutions of Negative Pulse Equation Involving Pier Point Primes. First of all, I recall the terms. Uh, a negative pulse equation is a kind of Diophantine equation, which is of the form x square minus dy square equal to minus 1. The more interesting case is to solve the general form that is x square minus dy square equal to minus n. In this paper, the equation x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power t, where t belongs to n. We focus on this equation. This equation is formed by the pair point primes 3 and 73. A pair point prime is of the form 2 power u into 3 power v plus 1, where u and v are non negative integers. This process of finding non-negative solutions to this equation, we consider five choices for t. That is t equal to 1, t equal to 3, t equal to 5, t equal to 2k, and t equal to 2k plus 5. Then I recall that a Diophantine equation is a polynomial equation. That is of the form p of x1, comma x2, comma and so on, xn equal to 0, where the polynomial p has integer co integral coefficients and all of its solutions are integers. For example, x square plus y square equal to z square is a diapantine equation where x, if we take x equal to 3, y equal to 4 and z equal to 5, it is one of its in infinitely many solutions. A Pell equation is a kind of diapantine equation. It is of the form x square minus d y square equal to 1, where d is a non-negative non-square natural number. Similarly, a negative Pell equation is of the form x square minus dy square equal to minus 1. Yeah, Pierpont prime is a prime number of the form 2 power k into 3 power l plus 1 where k and l are non-negative integers. For example, if I take a prime 13 and it, uh, it can be written as a form 2 power 2 into 3 power 1 plus 1. Therefore, 13 is a Pierpont prime. In this section, I take the uh, pair point primes 3 and 73 and the form a diapantine equation, which is of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power t. This equation has infinitely many solutions for the choice of t. Uh, we, uh, we will discuss the choices t equal to 1, t equal to 3, t equal to 5, t equal to 2k and t equal to 2k plus 5. Choice 1, t equal to 1. My generalized uh, Diophantine equation is x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power t. If I take t equal to 1, the Pearl's equation is uh, of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3. Let, let us take x0 comma y0 as the initial solution of this equation. Then we get x0 equal to 17 and y0 equal to 2. To find the other solutions of equation 3.1, we consider the Pearl equation x square equal to 73 y square plus 1. Let us take the initial solutions as xn bar comma yn bar. Then we, we get xn bar equal to fn by 2 and yn bar equal to gn by 2 into root of 73, where fn and gn are given below. By applying uh, thus, we get a two points. Uh, first is an initial point, and we get a point x n bar comma y n bar. Then, applying Brahmagupta lemma, we get a sequence of non-zero in distant integer solutions for that equation. That is, x n plus one equal to one by two into seventeen into f n plus two into root seventy three into g n, and y n plus one equal to one by two into root of seventy three 
into 2 into root of 73 fn plus 17 into g by applying the Brahmagupta's lemma. Then we get, then we observing the terms fn and gn, we get a recurrence relation which is given below xn plus 2 minus 50, 5, 3, 4, triple 0, xn plus 1 plus xn equal to 0, and yn plus 2 minus 5, 3, 4, triple 0, yn plus 1 plus yn equal to 0. Then I take the choice number 2 as t equal to 3. If I take t equal to 3, the Pearce equation is of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power 3, uh, which has an initial solution x naught equal to 51 and y naught equal to 6. Then similar to the case 1, we applying Brahmagupta's lemma and uh, we get a two points x naught comma y naught and xn bar comma yn bar. Then we get the sequence of non-zero in distant integer solutions as is xn plus one and yn plus one. Then uh, in the similar manner, we get a recurrence relation uh, to the solutions of 3.5 as given below. Then I take choice three, t equal to five. Then this Pearce equation is of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power 5, which has initial solution x naught equal to 153 and y naught equal to 18. Then again, I am applying the Mokuta's lemma and I get the two solution, two sequence of solutions xn plus 1 and yn plus 1. And in similar manner, I am observing fn and gn, I get a recurrence relation which is given below. Choice for t equal to 2k. Uh, I'm taking it as choices, a generalized term t equal to 2k. Then the Pulse equation is of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power 2k, whose initial solutions are x naught equal to 1068 into 3 power k and y naught equal to 125 into 3 power k. By applying Brahmagupta's lemma between these two points, I get a sequence of non-zero distant solutions as xn plus 1 and yn plus 1. And I also get the recurrence relations for these solutions. Choice 4, I take t equal to 2k plus 1. Then the Pearce equation is of the form x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power 2k plus 5, whose initial solutions are obtained by 5, 8, 6, 1 into 3 power k minus 1 and 6, 8, 6 into 3 power k minus 1. By applying Brahmagupta's lemma between these two points, I get a sequence of non-zero solutions for this equation that is xn plus 1 and yn plus 1. And I also get a recurrence relation by Brahmagupta's lemma that is given below. Conclusion. So in this paper, I discussed the solutions of negative Pearl's equation, which is formed by the two pair point primes 3 and 73, that is x square equal to 73 y square minus 3 power t, where t belongs to n. For the case, t equal to 1, t equal to 3, t equal to 5, t equal to 2k, and t equal to 2k plus 1. Hence, I obtained infinitely many integer solutions, many positive integer solutions for the various choices of t. These are my references. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what is Brahmagupta Lama? Um, Brahmagupta Lama is applying for uh, two dependent equations. If I take two dependent equations, dx square plus m1 equal to y square and dx square plus m2 equal to y square. Then if I get an initial solution x1, y, x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2 for these equations, then uh, I, I get a general solution for the equation dx square plus m1 m2 equal to y square as x1 y2 plus x2 y1 comma y1 y2 plus dx1 x2 and x1 y2 minus x2 y1 comma y1 y2 minus dx1 x2 now. Ma'am, Ma can I audible? Ma'am? Sorry, using Brahmagupta Lama, you find the solutions, isn't it? Yes, ma'am.
ah okay thank you for the presentation thank you ma'am next register number is al104 next register number is al104 yes ma'am ma'am is the screen is visible uh it at the start uh, yes it's visible okay ma'am thank you ma'am myself abhirami from ayara jani ml college uh, my topic is the special type and and triples involving center square numbers here is my abstract in this paper i uh, in this paper i discussed about uh, dipanda triples and uh, to construct the three distinct center square numbers of rank n and n minus 1 and n minus 2 and n minus 3 and finally try to find some properties of center square numbers here is my introduction the word dipanda refers to the dipanda dipantine of alexandria uh, he is a greek mathematician from 3rd century and he was one of the first to introduce symbols into variables based mathematics and ipanas begins by looking into the problem of obtaining rational quadratuples and fermat discovered the first integers quadratuples uh, during his dipanant uh, period uh, he discovered a uh, discovered many more results and definitions including dipanant m tables and dipanant equations dipanant m tables nothing but a set of m distance integers 1 2 3 etc m Which satisfy the conditions that product of any two different integers, uh, the, uh, any two different elements plus one is a perfect square. Like uh, suppose uh, take m equal to three, the set of integers one, two, three satisfy the conditions a i a i to a j plus one is a perfect square, which is said to be a dipanant three double or a dipanant triples. Uh, so in this paper, my goal of work is to create a special dipanant three double. For the center square numbers, which is the rank of n, n minus one and n minus two, the this is the notation for center square number of rank n, c which is c four comma n. The four denotes the denoted as square, and n is the rank. Uh, center square number is nothing but a symbolic number, uh, which is represented as square with a dot in the middle. Uh, in other words, the uh, center square number is the product of two consecutive numbers, that is n square plus n minus one the whole square. Here are some Uh, center square numbers are one, five, thirteen, twenty-five, and so on. Uh, uh, this is the basic definition for the special dipanant triples, which is a set of three different polynomials with integers coefficient a, b, and c. It is said to be a special dipanant triples uh, with uh, uh, with the property of d of n, uh, which is satisfy the condition product of a b plus a plus b plus n is a perfect square for all a less than or equal to b and less than or equal to c. Where n may be a non-zero integer with integer coefficients. So this is the methodology. Uh, now I uh, to construct a special dipanant triples involving uh, center square number of rank n and n minus one. So I I uh, take a and b be the center square number of rank n and n minus one. Uh, then we know the uh, c c four comma n uh, is n square plus n minus one square. Then let t of q one Uh, then we know the definition of uh, a special dipanant equation a b plus c plus b plus t of q i. Then we get b square, which is the rough, which is a perfect square. Then let take c be the non-zero integer. Then replace uh, c as uh, a and b in the definition. So we get a c plus c plus c plus d q uh, q of one uh, uh, equal to q square. Take this equation one and also. Take it as equation two. Uh, then eliminating c from one and two by setting q and r, we get the Bell equation uh, with initial conditions y not y not and x not. Then we have c, uh, which is also a center square number uh, of rank n plus one. Um, therefore, this is the triple uh, a comma. Uh, finally, we get the triple a comma b comma c equal to two uh, n square minus two n plus one. Two uh, n square minus six n plus five comma two n square plus two n plus one is a dipanant triple with the property d of minus three n power four plus six n cube plus three n square minus six n minus two. Uh, here is some numerical example for this triple. Um, uh, put uh, where put n equal to one, the dipanant triple is uh, one comma one comma five, and uh, d of q q one equal equal to minus two. 
and n equal to 2, uh, we get that type 1 and tripled 5 comma 1 comma 3 and the d of q 1 equal to minus 2 and so on. And next, uh, I construct of the special type 1 and triples involving center square number of rank n and n minus 1. Uh, as usual, like uh, take uh, a and b be the center square number of uh, rank and n and n minus 1. Let the d of q2 be minus 3 n power 4 plus 6 n cube plus 39 n square minus 42 n minus 2. And, uh, uh, and apply the definition and we get the alpha square, which is also a perfect square. And let c be the non zero integer uh, and take uh, b, uh, beta square and gamma square uh, and take it as the equation 3 and 4. And eliminating p from 3 and 4 by setting beta and gamma, we get the billion equations with initial condition y naught and x naught. And finally, we have the Solution C equal to uh, C of 4 comma N plus 1, which is also a center square number of uh, rank N plus 1. Finally, we get a triplet C comma B comma C, which is uh, uh, 2 N square minus 2 N plus 1 comma 2 N square minus 10 N plus 13 and 2 N square plus 6 N plus 5 is a dipanel uh, triple with the property T of Q2. Here is some numerical example for uh, this triple uh, triples. Where put n equal to 1, uh, we get a dipanel triples 1 comma 5 comma 13 and d of q2 equal to minus 2 and n equal to 2, we get a triple uh, 5 comma 1 comma 25, uh, we get a d of q2 equal to 70 and so on. Uh, and finally, to construct the special dipanel triples involving center square number of rank uh, n and n minus 3 is uh, uh, also like uh, similar way that a and b be two center, uh, center square number and let d of q3 and uh, put, uh, apply the definition and let c be the non-zero integers and eliminating, from, eliminating c from five, 5 and 6 by setting v and w and uh, we get the billion equations with the initial conditions y naught and x naught. Finally, we have c uh, which is also a center square number. Uh, finally, the triples a, a comma b comma c equal to 2 of uh, 2n square minus 2n plus 1 comma 2n square minus 14n plus 25 2n square plus 10n plus 13 is the dipanel triple with the property d of q3 here's some numerical example for this uh, dipanel triples and uh, next uh, some properties of center square numbers uh, all the center square numbers are uh, odd and following the pattern 1 5 3 5 and 1 and all the center square numbers are in the form 4k plus 1 which is the Hilbert number. Every, every center square numbers are a Hilbert number, uh, but every Hilbert number need not be a center square number. Every center square number can be expressed as a sum of consecutive numbers, sum of two consecutive numbers, and that are congruent to one mod four. And every, every number in this triple is the half of the nth odd square number plus one. Every, every number n is in the in this triple also can be expressed in terms of triangular as well as the central triangular numbers. Every central square numbers except to one is the hypotenuse of the Pythagorean triple. And uh, finally, uh, every number in this triple is a difference between two consecutive octa hedgehog numbers. And uh, my conclusions, uh, this is the this is shown about the center square, center square numbers. Uh, uh, um, one may maybe future one may such that try to another uh, type of numbers for their corresponding futures. These are my reference. Thank you. Um. Ma'am? Ma'am? Archana, ma'am, would you like to say something? Archana, ma'am? Are you there? I think there is some technical issue. Uh, let's move on to the next presentation. AL109. Next presentation is AL109.
Archana ma'am, you are not audible. Archana ma'am, are you saying something? AL109, please wait. Archana ma'am, do you want to say something? Archana ma'am? Register number AL109, please wait. Archana ma'am has have uh, is there uh, is having some technical issue. Hello. Yes, Miss. Can you Yes, Miss. Hey, come. Archana, ma'am. Hey, come. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, last participant name, please. Ma'am, Abhirami, ma'am. Ah, okay, Abhirami. Yeah, what is the specialty of diphenyl triplets? Is there any specialty for diphenyl triplets? I don't know about the idea, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What do you mean by different interplates? Ma'am, uh, uh, type and interplates is a, a product of any two elements plus uh, uh, that number plus uh, n is a perfect square, ma'am. Uh, it gives us perfect square, ma'am. Okay. What is standard square numbers? Uh, standard square numbers is a pro, uh, sum of two consecutive numbers, and it is also a figure eight number, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, register number AL109. Now you can start. Register number AL109. 
Are you there? L one not nine. Can you hear me? Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Is my screen screen is full, ma'am? Yes. We can see your screen and you're audible too. Please start the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Ramya Kani. I'm a postgraduate graduate student in Ayanadar Janagimal College, Vagasi. Now I'm going to deliver the topic is on exponential Diffontine equation involving Jarsanda numbers. Here is my abstract. An exponential uh, Diffontine equation of the form p power x plus q power y equal to z square plays a crucial role in mathematical research. So many researchers contributed for these kind of equations. Likewise, we deal with the equations 3 power x plus 3025 power y equal to z square and 3 power x plus 2025 power y equal to z square, which involves the well-known Jarsandha numbers. It is showed with proof that 1, 0, 2 is the unique solution for these equations. Introduction. Here, the history, uh, historical introduction of uh, number theory and the definition of uh, Diffontine equation. Uh, the, number, the theory of numbers is an area of mathematics concerned with the properties of whole numbers such as 1, 2, 3, up to, and so on sometimes known as accounting numbers or positive integers. Uh, positive integers are without a doubt the first mathematical creation of man. It, uh, it's difficult to envision uh, humans without the ability to count at least within a certain range. Um, this is the um, Diffontine equation given below. Uh, an equation containing only sums, products and powers with all constants being integers and only integer solutions of interest is called Diffontine equation. The example for Diffontine equation is 3, 3x plus 7y equal to 1 or x square minus y square equal to z cube. The, this is, uh, the definition of concurrence is k, b and m are integers with m is greater than 0. If m divides the difference a minus b, we say a is concurrent to b modulo m. Um, the number m is a modulus, a modulus number, which is always positive. Uh, exponential Diffontine equation. Uh, if a Diffontine equation has additional variable or variable occurring as exponents, it is an exponent, exponential Diffontine equation. Uh, Jarsandha numbers. We meet a character named Jarsandha in the Indian epic Mahabharata. He was cursed with the ability to reunit and return to life if he was split into two parts and hurled apart. We have numbers in mathematics that demonstrate the same quality as Jarsandha. Uh, the example for Jarsandha number is 81. Uh, we can split 80, 81 into two digits, 8 and 1, and add this. Um, and its square, add this, we can, uh, we can get 9. And its square is again 81. So it's called so is called Jarsandha number. Main results and properties. Uh, prop, prop, uh, proposition one. Um, the Diffontine equation a power x minus b power y equal to one uh, has a unique solution three comma two comma two three, uh, namely a b x y, where a b x y integers and minimum of a, b, x, y is greater than 1. The second one is uh, 1, comma 2 is a unique solution for the Diffontine equation 3 power x plus 1 equal to z square, where x and z are non-negative integers. Um, and third one is 1 plus 81, 81 power y equal to z square has non-negative integer solution where y and z are non-negative integers. 
because um, this equation uh, split into two cases uh, when y equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to one. First, we prove y is y equal to zero. Uh, we put y equal to zero in this equation. Uh, we get z square equal to two. Therefore, z equal to square root of two, which is um, non not an integer. Uh, it contradicts the z is non negative integer. So uh, when y equal to zero, we get uh, this equation has no non negative integer solution. Uh, then for the and the next case, y is greater than or equal to one. Uh, we put y equal to one. Z square equal to eighty two. Therefore, z is equal to square root of 82 is not an integer. Therefore, uh, this equation has no non-negative integer solution. The Diophantine equation uh, 1 plus 2025 power y equal to z square has no non-negative integer solution. Uh, this is a similar proof of above. Um, to, then 5 is um, 5. The Diophantine equation 1 plus 3025 power y equal to z square has no non negative integer solution. This also similar way, similar proof of 3. And theorem 1 uh, there are infinitely many non negative integer solutions for the Diophantine equation 3 power x plus 81 power y equal to z square. And the solution is of the form 1 plus 8n, 2n, 2 into 3 power 4n and 5 plus 8n comma 2n plus 1 comma 18 into 3 power 4n where n belongs to the union of natural number and singleton 0. Um, this theorem proof is divided into two cases. Uh, case 1, y is even. Um, in the case, we split y, y is two cases. Um, y equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. When y equal to 0, then by proposition 2, the equation has a unique solution 1 comma 2. That is 1 comma 0 comma 2 is the only solution for y equal to 0. When y equal to 2n, uh, where n belongs to natural number, uh, the given equation um, changes 3 power x plus 81 power 2n equal to z square. Uh, which implies z square minus 81 power 2n equal to 3 power x. This is the form of a square minus b square and x um, and expand this uh, formula and uh, simplify it. We get 2 into 81 power n equal to 3 power u into 3 power x minus 2u minus 1. The only possible case is 2 equal to 3 power x minus 2u minus 1 and uh, 81 power n equal to 3u. Um, we can simplify this equation and we get x equal to 1 plus 8n and u equal to 4n. Hence, we substitute um, x equal to 1 plus 8n and y equal to 2n. In given equation, we get z equal to 2 into 3 power 4n. Therefore, y is even the solutions are 1 plus 8n comma 2n comma 2 into 3 power 4n. And the case 2. Uh, y is odd. Then y equal to 2n plus 1. Um, the given equation can be written as 3 power x plus 81 power 2n plus 1 equal to z square. Z square. Um, in the similar manner, z square uh, minus 81 power 2n plus 1 equal to 3 power x. Um, we simplify it. We can get 2 into 9 power 2n plus 1 equal to 3 power u into 3 power x minus 2u minus 1. From the above, we get x, uh, x value and uh, u value. We substitute x value and y value in given equation. We get 5 plus 8n comma 2n plus 1 comma 18 into 3 power 4n. Theorem 2, uh, 1 comma 0 comma 2 is a unique solution. For the Diophantine equation, 3 power x plus 2025 power y equal to z square. Um, this is, um, we use this, this theorem in concurrence, using concurrence. Uh, x and y, z be non-negative integers. Uh, by proposition 4, we have x is greater than or equal to 1. And since z is even, so z square concurrent to 0 mod 4. Since 
This include that z square concurrent to 2 mod 5 or uh, 3 mod 5 and or 3 mod 5. But z square is concurrent to 0 mod 5 or 1 mod 5 or 4 mod 5. This is the contradiction. Therefore, 1 comma 0 comma 2 is the unique solution for the Diophantine equation. As the similar way, similar proof of above theorem. Um, The Diophantine equation 3 power x plus 2025 power y equal to w power 4 has no non negative integer solution. Corollary to the Diophantine equation 3 power x plus 3025 power y w power equal to w power 4 has no non negative integer solution. Conclusion in this paper, uh, we proved that uh, th uh, 3 power x plus 3025 power y equal to z square and 3 power x plus 2025 power y equal to z square has a unique solution 1 comma 0 comma 2 these are references um thank you and in this presentation uh jeta sandha numbers was uh, something very interesting uh, uh thank you for the presentation thank you Next register number is AL110. AL110, please begin your presentation. Yes, ma'am. It is audible to you. It's your audible. And you were presenting, but it's not uh, presenting. You are not presenting now. Right now, ma'am, it is visible. Yes, ma'am. My presentation is visible. No, you are audible, but you are not visible. Your presentation okay. is not Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible now. Yes, you may see. Google form. Yes, good afternoon to everyone. Myself, Alka Manjal, Assistant Professor in the Department of Mathematics, Akal University. Today I am presenting my uh, research paper that is convoluted normal summability of orthogonal series. And these are the summability method, which is very helpful to study the uh, summable point for the diverging series. Actually, we work on a converging series and we uh, never uh, means we left uh, uh, study on the diverging series. So in this summability method, we study on our diverging series. So Grandi was uh, Grandi series was first solved by the Cesaro and the concept is very much related to the uh, same concept. Now uh, I'm studying the non-round summability method for the orthogonal series. For this, I have used almost absolute non-round summability method for find the uh, find a theorem for the least set of the sufficient condition for an infinite series that is orthogonal series to be absolute summable that is non-round summable. And this is very helpful for the our system to having a bounded uniform bounded output stability. So uh, for that one, the polygon. Yes. So for that one, we have uh, firstly uh, defined an in, uh, orthogonal series with the, with the condition first and second. 
now we have defined the normal summability for the normal summability we should have a mean that is the uh, p and k which is represented in the equation 4 that is the formula of p n minus k divided by p n now we have used this mean to find the absolute summable factor the, now we have defined the convoluted normal summable factor with the help of the equation 7 and 8 here the eighth uh, equation representing the uh, convoluted normal mean that is t and p q for that one, uh, again, we have uh, find some other definition, which is uh, uh, sequence by sequence. And finally, we have yeah, used the sequence that is almost yeah. index yeah. so yeah. related by and P, Q, and K summable. So our used, uh, used equation is 16, which will be used to prove our result. That is the summation N is equal to 1 to infinity pi N del T and M P, Q raised to power K. So for, for that one, we, we firstly study the result of Okuyama, which is the equation one and second. In this, he used the orthogonal series and used an EQ summable fact, factor, which is of index one. And then uh, the other result is also for the convoluted normal mean that is PN sequence and QN sequence. And the simi uh, similar series has been orthogonal series has been used, but other conditions are found for the series to be absolute summable. These conditions are first, second, third, which is given here. So uh, for our main result, we replaced our summability method by the phi and PQ and K summable method, which is very advanced method. And we study the orthogonal series and the condition uh, of our previous result that is 18 has been replaced and generalized by the equation 20. And the condition uh, theorem four is the uh, advanced result of our theorem three, which is uh, uh, the result of the Okuyama. Here we have used the sequence phi and P, Q, M, K summable method for uh, that P, N, and Q, N sequences and the orthogonal series has been used. Uh, so our condition have been uh, generalized by the condition for second, third. In this uh, R, uh, RJ is also replaced by some other condition. Now use lemma is by the attention that is the equation 22 and 23 are the required condition for this lemma that is summation B, T will be almost convoluted everywhere uh, summable to a function V, T over the V. For the proof, as I said that firstly we, uh, we study the diverging that is orthogonal series here and uh, the series uh, firstly we need to find the sequence of partial sum which is the summation of uh, the previous nth term with the help of the sequence of partial sum we will find the main as we have the equation t n m p q x that is 1 over r n summation p n minus v q v s v m that is the sequence of partial sum that s v m here we use the sequence of partial sum then we use this mean for uh, and we simplify the term now we have find the difference of the mean that is represented by del t n m p q x and this is the difference of the two terms that is given here by the condition 26. Then the proof for the proof of the theorem 3, as I said, that the theorem uh, equation 16 will be used for our theorem and attention result is also used for our theorem. So firstly, we prove the summation n is equal to 1 to infinity, so uh, integral from a to b mod of phi n del n m p q x raised to the power k dx to be uh, in a simple form. And we have proved it as this is of order one it is in the equation 27 by you using the result of equation one then we we said that this is of the convert uh, of order one so our uh, this result will be of order one so by using the lemma we can say that our uh, orthogonal series is almost everywhere convergent for the uh, proof of the theorem four firstly we need to we will use the attention uh, result that is summation integral of that term dx and we use the condition of our theorem four and we have uh, apply every three condition of that one and we have proved it it is of order one by using the condition of the theorem four so uh, this is the two main result of our research paper and the special cases of the main result mean that is the corollary for if we have take, as we have said that we have used the generalized summability method if we take phi n is equal to n to the power gamma uh, del plus one minus one over k uh, one over n then our result will be converted to the uh, for the infinite uh, for the summable method and pq del gamma mk summable method 
uh, theorem one and sec corollary first and second representing that result. If we use phi n as n raised to the power del plus one minus one over uh, k, then our result will be replaced by for the other conditions. And the uh, that is the, for the third cases we have find and we have replaced uh, phi n by n one minus one over k, which is rendered with the result of our uh, uh, Krasniki result, which is uh, published previously. And uh, now the fourth cases these results are found for the resummability, simple resummability, as we have worked on the convoluted summability method. Then these uh, summability can be converted into the simple summability method by the resummability method. If we take a p t v is equal to one, and if uh, these are given in the equations uh, uh, in corollary seven and eight, uh, so uh, these are the results. Uh, for the conclusion, we can say that uh, the, this is a very uh, uh, generalized result that we have find. We can find the Okoyama result and uh, the Krasniki result from our uh, main results. And uh, uh, it is very useful in BI view stability as uh, uh, absolute summability is required for a system to have a bounded output so that we can study its effect. It's a bounded data can be studied so we can study that. So uh, uh, thank you so much. These are the references. Thank you. What is BIBO stable means? That is the bounded input, bounded output is stability means uh, uh, it is very difficult for uh, for us to study an unbounded data so firstly we filter some some data and uh, i have also applied some i have also find some application part of our theorem uh, in our in our next paper so we have used a bounded data then uh, uh, for that system to come out as a bounded output. So it can be studied and we can observe the complete process of the system which is uh, working there. So uh, it is helpful in this case. Yes, ma'am, I'm audible. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Now, next register number is AL111. Next register number is AL111. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Is my screen uh, visible? Is my screen visible? Yes, you are visible. Your screen is visible. Thank you. Sir, it is not audible, sir. Sir, it is not audible. Yes, sir. Is the audio not audible? Okay. Yes, you are audible now. I mean the presentation, not audible. Yes, your presentation wasn't audible. Yes. 
AL11, please continue. You are audible now. So we can hear you now. We can see only the presentation. Yes, sir. So we can hear you. We can see only the video. Oh, perhaps there is something wrong with my audio. Should I continue? Now we can hear you. Okay. Before and after AL one one audio is not on and audible now. Uh, please wait. Uh, we will invite the next register number. You could continue your presentation after that. Thank okay. you. Next register number is AL one one two. AL one one two. AL one one two, are you there? Register number AL one one two, are you there? AL112, are you there? Register number AL112, last call. Venus, please call the next person. Register number AL111. Are you ready now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you may continue. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, I'll just repeat my presentation. Good day, everyone. I am Ramsey Odisena. Here is my study entitled Enhancement of Mathematics Competency Through Independent Cooperative Learning. DepEd introduced a new curriculum through DepEd Order Number 31 Series of 2012 in the educational system as K-12. A new strategy, Independent Cooperative Learning, or ICL, was implemented. ICL is of great benefit to the performance of the students in the classroom. It enables its productivity in achieving desired results. 
students motivation, attention, retention, test scores, and social skills were all enhanced due to ICN. No research has yet been performed in tertiary schools using the ICL strategy. The National Achievement Test or NAT results for 2013 to 2014 in one of the school divisions of DepEd, math had the lowest mean percentage score of 26.34 points. As a result, the researcher used the ICL to develop students' competencies at the college level and within a program. This research aimed to develop a tutorial and instructional program or TIP using the Independent Cooperative Learning or ICL. Specifically, it looked at students' math competencies in college and advanced algebra before and after TIP was implemented. Furthermore, it also determined social skills and values and attitudes. This research employed mixed quantitative and qualitative methods involving developmental and survey procedures. The pre-test and post-test were used to assess the competencies developed among college and advanced algebra students. Meanwhile, the TIP was established utilizing the developmental method. Moreover, the survey method was used to determine the competencies acquired in terms of social skills and values and attitudes. The respondents from this study were first-year college students taking a Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Mathematics in one of the tertiary schools in Camarines Sur, Philippines. The class was composed of 40 students, 14 males and 26 females. There was no sampling and all of them were used as respondents. Furthermore, they were the first batch of K-12 graduates who took up senior high school with different tracks or strands and came from various municipalities in Camarines Sur, Naga City, and Masbate. This study used a teacher-made test and survey questionnaire to determine the developed competencies among college and advanced algebra students. It was validated by the experts composed of math professors and other related education courses. The test was pilot-tested first to 34 fourth-year BS and math major students. Furthermore, the survey questionnaire was constructed through an open-ended question and it was modified and adapted from the existing instrument. The developed program TIP using ICL was adopted and modified based on the related programs which offers tutoring, instructional assistance, and a supportive and secure learning atmosphere. The researcher asked the school administrators for the approval of the proposed program for this study. The sessions were determined based on the students' schedules and used their available time not to affect their classes. The topics included in the test were aligned in the course description and only used the topics which covered the meter. Furthermore, this study developed a tutorial instructional program using independent cooperative learning strategy that ran for 10 sessions of 15 hours. After implementing the program, the post-test was given to the students to determine their mathematical skills. Meanwhile, to determine the social skills and values and attitudes developed throughout the program's implementation, the survey questionnaire was used. The researcher used the statistical tools such as frequency counting and mean percentage score to assess the competencies developed among the students in college advanced algebra both for the pre-test and post-test. The number of students who got the correct response per competency was calculated using frequency counts which were then converted into percent by using the given formula. In addition, to interpret the mean percentage score results in their pre-test and post-test, the guidelines of National Education Testing and Research Center was used. The ethical guidelines were put into place for the research period to protect the respondents' dignity and well-being. The researchers sought the students' consent to participate in conducting the research and an approved letter from the school heads was sought before conducting the study. Furthermore, the respondents' test results and outputs were assured confidential. As presented in Table 1, it shows in the pretest that among the learning competencies in college advanced algebra, the properties of real numbers get the highest percentage rating. It was followed by quadratic equations, linear equations, solution of systems of equations, properties of exponents, simplified radicals, complex numbers, 
complex roots, operations and radicals, linear equation in solving real-world problems, radical expression, and lastly, quadratic equation in solving real-world problems. It further revealed that the students got low scores in the pretest. According to Huwen, students should not be expected to know some of the answers to the pretest questions. However, they should be expected to use prior knowledge to interpret rational solutions. Thus, it is vital to develop a program and use teaching strategy suited to diverse learners to bridge the gap for students who lack competencies. This would enrich students' ability to solve math problems. Since the ICL is one of the deputy teacher strategies intervening students' interest in various lessons, it was adopted in the Developed Tutorial Instructional Program or TIP. The TIP is a program that provides tutoring, coaching, instructional support services for all students regardless of their abilities. It also provides an open, safe learning environment for them with the assistance of their teacher. In this program, students can learn independently by themselves, share their educational experiences with more knowledgeable others, work as a team to achieve a specific task, gain positive relationship and interdependence, and develop mathematics and social skills and values and attitudes. This would provide an alternative way of strategy to the instructors in tertiary schools to enhance their students' skills and competencies. TIP stands out from other programs because it provides tutorial sessions with program proposals, 10 sessions of lessons and activities, a session guide, a class record, attendance record, a completion certificate, and recognition. The Table 2 shows the competencies developed among the students in implementing the ICL in terms of mathematics skills. The post-test procedure was used to evaluate learner outcomes in college advanced algebra. Among the learning competencies, the Simplified Radicals got the highest percentage rating than the others, and only one competency had low mastery learning accumulated. This means that the TIP through ICL strategy had a significant effect on the students' mathematical skills. According to Lazarus, students introduced to cooperative learning as a teaching strategy performed well. Through the implementation of Tutorial Instructional Program or TIP using Independent Cooperative Learning or ICL, there were social skills developed such as encourage friendship among co-students of different abilities and social levels, promote face-to-face -face interaction among co-students and teacher, provide the opportunity to learn the importance of teamwork, give confidence to recite in the class discussion, share information and opinions about different strategies in solving mathematical problems, exercise more communication skills. The students' responses were collected and used the framework for Philippine mathematics teacher education to generalize their responses. Just like social skills, there were values and attitudes developed in the implementation of TIP using ICL, such as persevere to gain learnings and complete tasks given, confidence to solve math problems and do some tasks, and motivate to progress academically. For conclusions and recommendations, according to the pretest findings, the students had low learning competencies in college advanced algebra. As a result, the developed tutorial structural program or TIP utilized independent cooperative learning as a strategy. Students also developed social skills, values, and attitudes in addition to their mathematical skills. Students who are having trouble understanding math concepts need extra assistance and instructional time. Other programs may be implemented using ICL strategy to enhance students' competencies. Furthermore, extending ICL session to two hours would benefit both the teacher and the students by providing them more opportunities to deliver the lessons and interact with one another during the activities. Learners should be given more word problems, exercises, to enhance their problem-solving skills. They should be exposed to more student groups and face-to-face -face interaction to develop their confidence and socialization skills. Here are my references in my study. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul. The second session of the paper presentation is over. Arsana, ma'am, would you like to say something to? Uh, to us, Arsana, ma'am. Okay. 
I convey my sincere thanks and gratitude uh, to all the faculty members of Fatima Mada National College, Department of Mathematics, especially Anne Vargis, ma'am, and uh, uh, the program coordinator, Dr. Rosni B, to give me a chance to uh, chair the session. And also, I uh, give best wishes to all the participants who were presented their works here. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to welcome uh, Anina Shibu, third DC match, for the vote of thanks. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of Atamada National College Department of Mathematics and entire fraternity of ma management here, extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Archana VP, ma'am. Finally, I would like to thank all of you present here for making the time to be with us today and helping us to make this event a grand success. Thank you all. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Roshni Ma'am to introduce our beloved guest, Dr. Telvinus Anthony, the lecturer of University of Lenten, the former head of our department, for a talk on Lenten identity. Good evening, y'all. Now, let me introduce our eminent speaker, Professor Dr. Telvinus Anthony. He completed his bachelor degree in 1979 from Fatima Mada National College and his major master degree in 1981 from Srinarana College Kollam. He has secured PhD from University of Kerala in 2001. Our college is privileged with his service from 1982 to 2006 as a lecturer as well as head of the department. After qualifying PGC in London, now he was as a lecturer in International Studies under Princeton University, and a reviewer in SIPMAT, Haldian rings and their applications, errors in Gregorian calendar, circulants and group algebras are major research articles in his credit. Very proudly, and I welcome you, sir, for this lecture. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Tell me, sir. Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Telvinus Anthony, former head of the department of mathematics at the National College. I'm very happy to be here and uh, share my experience with you. Today I'm going to have Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes sir. It's visible. OK. Now, today I'm going to talk about um, on men on identity and men on type identities. This identity, uh, first of all, I, I would like to welcome all to this session. And 
the sole aim of science is the honor of human mind. A question about numbers is as important as a question about the system of the world. Yeah. It, is, it is Sir? the quotes from Jacob Jacobi, Excuse the greatest me. mathematics teacher the world ever has seen. I think, can you hear me? Sir? Uh, uh, can, you, can you see my screen? Your screen is visible, but it's not a presentation. It's a chat. It's only chat. Yes. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Now it's a presentation. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. The technical issues are facing. Right. So topic is on main on identity and main on type identities. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to this session and with us court. The sole aim of science is the whole human mind. A question about numbers is as important as a question about the system of the world. By Jacob Jacobi, he is identified as one of the greatest mathematics teacher in the world. So it is Menon's identity. Menon's identity states that for every n, a natural number starting from mn is equal to the summation a n are relatively prime, which means a is a unit in ZN. The GCD of a minus one n is equal to phi n and tau n. Phi n is our Euler torsion function and tau n is the number of devices. And this identity was in, invented by a Kerala mathematician who born in Ayalathur Palakkad, P.K. Keshava Menon. And he published his work 1965. Can you see the bottom reference? A Menon on some the some sigma p of a n my a one a minus one n journal of indian mathematical society 1965 so this is the main on identity i would like to verify this using a computer code for that i am going to share another screen Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Man on identity. This is the program I developed using language C++ to check whether the man on identity is true or false. And I created a program and I'm going to run that program for some values. For example, 20. The output gives five value as eight, number of devices as six. So two times five is equal to 48. And if you add the greatest devices of A minus one N, we will get 48. 
this shows that the the main on identity is true for all n and this program we can use for any positive integer n so the purpose is whether this identity is true or false we can use computer programming and the reason is the biggest in algebra is computer algebra we can have quite lot of computer algebra systems cross probably you might have heard about micros the which the math lab then maple soft magam these are the computer computer systems developed for algebra and the, the purpose of showing this program is to introduce younger generations of mathematicians how to use computer in algebra so the the new direction of algebra is through computer programming and developing computer codes so just to show you how we can do with the computer codes how we can link mathematical formulas with the computer codes that is the main purpose of this and now i am going back to the main screen can you see this can you see the screen yes sir oh, yes okay and we had a, we have another mathematician you care like mathematician whose name is ss pil who born in nagarkoil which was part of old travancore and this ss pil worked as a teacher in our you know kerala university in 19 and uh, unfortunately he died in a plane crash in 1950 while he was going to present some work in harvard university international conference so this pille has developed a, a gcd some functions which is the sum of the gcd is an which is equal to d times phi of n o n by this is division n by d where d divides n actually men used this pille function to prove his result the main results of men on results are if f is a multiplicative arithmetic function of all variables p polynomials over z then the function f of p1 a n these are gcds is a multiplicative in single variable n where p i a n i less than or equal 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to r is this gcd of p i n and he published this result in the journal cited below and the result is he invented different formulas they are very pretty beautiful formulas in number theory now we are coming to a special type of division called unitary division i will explain the division later the next result is if multiplicative arithmetic function before that we should know what is multiplicative arithmetic function arithmetic function is a math from natural numbers to complex numbers the functions starting from number etc to the complex numbers are called arithmetic functions multiplicative means if m f of m n is equal to f of m times f of n where gcd of m n 
is equal to one. The function satisfying mn is f of mn is equal to fm times fn, where m and n are relatively primes are called multiplicative functions. And the function is said to be completely multiplicative if we, we don't need this condition. That is f of mn is equal to f of m times f of m. This is completely multiplicative identity. For example, for the for this our phi function is completely is multiplicative arithmetic function because we know that phi mn is equal to phi of m times phi of m, where m comma n is equal to 1. So if mn are relatively prime, we know that this is a well-known result. Phi of mn is equal to phi m times phi n. For completely multiplicative function, we can define a function fn is equal to n per k, where k is fixed. Therefore, f of mn is equal to mn to the power k, which is equal to m to the power k, n to the power k, which is same as fm fn. So these are multiplicative arithmetic functions. So basically, Arithmetic functions are functions from natural numbers to complex numbers. And uh, multiplicative means fmn is equal to f of m times seven, where m and n are relatively prime. Completely multiplicative means we can, we, we don't need to use this condition, then we will get completely multiplicative function. The one example I have stated is, n power k. So this theorem is based on a multiplicative arithmetic function, which means this satisfies the condition f of n is equal to f of m times f of n with additional condition gcd of m n is equal to one. That is result. Quite interesting result here is by, this is one of the very interesting results Nageshwara Rao provided a unitary version of Menon's identity. This identity says this GCD is unitary GCD. It is not ordinary GCD. This is unitary GCD. This phi function is unitary phi function and this toy n is unitary number of devices. So what is actually unitary division? I will explain that. It's equal to, suppose n is equal to 20. The devices are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. These are the ordinary devices. But what are unitary devices? For unitary device, we need another condition. The GCD should be one. Using this, if you take two, what is the GCD of two and 20 by two? Which is two not equal to one. So the device is not unitary because that is not satisfying the condition d n by d is equal to one. But all other devices are devices. Example four. Four twenty four which is equal to 4, 5, which is equal to 1. 
the GCD of 20 by 4, 20 by 4, which is equal to 4, 5, it is equal to GCD of 4, 5, which is equal to 1. So 4 is a unitary device. And the formula to can compute 5 star is the product of P power V minus P power V is the standard representation of the number. For this same number 20, we can write it as two square times five power one. So five star n of 20 is equal to two power two minus one times five power minus one, which is equal to times four stone. But we know that ordinary phi of fan, ordinary phi of fan is equal to or phi of 20 is equal to 20 over two times four over five, which is eight. So, Five function, now ordinary five function is different from unitary five function. That you see from this example. But fortunately or unfortunately, the right side and left side of menon identities are satisfied by this unitary division. Menon's identity is for ordinary division, but Rao, Nagesh Rao invented a beautiful, similar to Menon's identity. That is, same equation is instead of ordinary division, we have unitary division. I hope you have understood all these things. Um, because of the short period of time, I have to start another lesson shortly. I am going to explain another division, you know, another regular integers. An integer is regular if there exists an integer x such that a square x is equal to a molar. Clearly, Suppose n is 20, clearly rates are regular. But in addition to that, we can find other regular elements, which are zero devices. For example, four, is regular. Four squared times six is equal to ninety-six. You can cite an example. I can find an example through a program. So I'm going to share that program. And you see the screen? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
This is unitary analog of mm, This program gives the unitary verification of unitary analogy of menor identity. The difficult part of this program is to find represent the standard form. I, I took several hours to program that to represent the standard form. Can you see the program? Yes, sir. And about the regular integers, we can find some zero devices as regular integers. All units are regular in integers, and I think the shorter time is allowing me to show that program. Anyway, so this this regular integer is no John one man one new man's regular rings. I probably some of you might have heard about regular rings, and this the integer a is called regular if there is an integer x such that a square x is a model that is the class of a regular elements this includes all the units clearly all units are just to put x as a inverse you will see that equation in addition to that we can have some other examples as well so using this the mathematician Elto, he, may, he has contributed a lot of uh, research papers based on man on identity. And in his paper, he, he put a thought, he put a very beautiful man on type identity. That is, sigma A belongs to regular N, A minus 1 N is equal to. It, this double line means unitary division. Sigma, unitary division, phi D and tau D. This is the version of regular. Somebody is, can you stop please? Somebody is marking on the screen. So this is another menon type identity. Instead of, instead of units, here we can use regular elements. A minus one N is equal to sigma unitary division and phi D to D. This is another. Now I am coming to Hadron rings. Hadron rings are rings with the unit element. A ring is said to be handed on ring with the index. If there is a primitive mth root of unity and m is invertible in R. I published this about handed on rings in 1999 through this paper, Circulants and Group Integrals, Chronic Journal Supplement in 1999. And a primitive nth root of unity in a ring is completely different from that of a field because of the presence of non-zero device, zero devices. In a field, there is no non-zero divisor, but in a ring, there is a zero divisor. So the, this is the embodiment in defining primitive nth root of unity. So an element W in a ring R is called primitive nth root of unity if order of omega is M and sigma omega raised to R minus or 
I minus J is equal to M when I is congruent to J modem is equal to zero when I not equal to J modem. More explicitly, one plus omega power R plus omega power R whole square plus et cetera, plus omega power R whole power M minus one is equal to M if R is equal to zero, is equal to zero if R is equal to one, two, three, et cetera, up to M minus one. This definition, this property all M in a complex field. But for a ring, we need to check all these conditions. So the first theorem is a ring R with unit is a halodon ring with the index M if and only if there is an omega in unit group of R such that all omega is M, which is a unit, and omega power R minus one belongs to unit group of R for R is equal to one, two, three, up to M minus one. And recently I improved this version to a, R, a ring R is with the unit is a halodon ring with the index M if and only if there is an omega belongs to a unit group of R such that order of omega is equal to M is a unit in R and omega power D minus one belongs to unit group of R for D is a divisor of M and D less than M. Which means we don't need to check all power of R that is one, two, three up to M minus one. We need just to check with the devices. If M is equal to 20, The devices are one, two, three. So we don't need to check from R is equal to one, two, three, et cetera, up to 19. Instead of that, we need to check only for R is equal to one, two, four, five, and 10. This is enough. And this result is published in the latest journal, that is Algebra's Groups and Geometries issue 2021, in a, recent, in a recent paper of mine. I published this. And what is the relevance with this and uh, Before that, another proposition is, that is about the counting of number of elements in R. Let R be a finite commutative commut halodon ring within M, then modulus of R is one model. So every halodon ring satisfies cardinality condition. That is, mod R is equal to one model. And there is a small example, so much small exercise related to this. The exercise is this. Let R be equal to Zn be a non-trivial halodon ring with the primitive mth root of unity. Now, the question is, show that sigma, the GCD of omega R minus one N is equal to K square M plus KM plus one, where mod R is equal to KM plus one. This mod R is, given by this proposition. The proposition says every, the modul, the cardinality of all halodon rings must be one model. So we can take modar as Km plus one. If modar is Km plus one, the sum of GCDC of omega power R minus one can be is equal to K square M plus Km plus one. And I give this as a small exercise to you. And uh, it needs only this theorem, that is the first theorem and the sum. Using these two theorems, it is easy to prove this property. 
that is g sum of the g series of omega r minus 1 n is equal to k square m plus k m plus 1 that is end of this session i have a, i have cut short this because i have to start in another lesson even if it is that you can ask any questions regarding this anybody has any questions for the audience Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Uh -huh. So, why do we take uh, the double slash for divides function? Double slash is unitary divide. This is not ordinary. This is ordinary. This is this device or is ordinary device, right? Yeah. This symbol is for unitary division. Okay. Unitary division. Unitary division. I explained to here, right? Example. N is equal to twenty. The devices are actually one, four, five, one, two, four, five, and twenty. The problem with the two is. Look at this. The divisor is said to be unitary divisor. It should satisfy another condition. The condition is d n by d. The GC of d n by d should be one. So if you take the value two, the GC of two twenty by two that is two and ten is two, which is not equal to one. So d is equal to two is not a unitary divisor. It is is ordinary divisor. Did you get it? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The Thank difference, you. the difference between unitary division and uh, ordinary division. Okay. But this is a very beautiful relation. Look, it looks like man on side and the but the difference is it is based on unitary rules. So this is a great work of Nageshwar, I think, for me, because it is it looks exactly same as man on side and the Right. Only we use the unitary version of divisions. Clear, sir. Clear. Hmm? Have you understood the notion of arithmetic functions and uh, multiplicate arithmetic function, completely multiplicate arithmetic functions? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, the purpose, sir. the main purpose of this lecture is to introduce. The Kerala mathematician P K Menon and uh, our neighboring state mathematician Pillai S S Pillai. That uh, that uh, that was the in main intention of this lecture. Any other questions? If those are interested in this, I can send this slide to Dr. Roshni. And you can get it from her. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Today, in this auspicious occasion, it's my pleasure to thank you, Dr. Telvina, sir. It was a very informative talk on the Menon's identity. Telvina, sir, I would like to thank you on behalf of our college and our mathematics department for sharing your time and knowledge with us. Thank you so much, sir. And I have to also thank the all members of the the great team 
to run this international conference. I can see several, uh, several presenters from different parts of India and even outside this uh, one researcher from, even though it is not directly connected to algebra or discrete mathematics, but I can see, I see one person from the Philippines, he presented something related to mathematical education. And in that respect, we got a broad spectrum of people from different places and different countries. So I should thank you for your efforts in bringing all together and uh, making this department great. And uh, there is a very, very young group of mathematics teachers in the department and they can make miracles in the department. And uh, at this time, I remember Professor Andy Jones, first uh, department head, he, he became the department head at the age of 25. Something similar to is happening now. A group of very young, dynamic teachers, you can make definitely miracles and the, the reputation of the college will cross the barriers of all countries. So I wish you all the best. I'm very happy to be here and being there for the period in my studies was there. I worked there, I became head of the department. And uh, in 2000, we celebrated World Mathematical Year 2000. And we started computer lab, journal library, and a seminar hall in one place at that time. Uh, Reverend Father, <coughs> the manager, Rosario, gave us some special fund to create all these things. I still remember that location that is at that time, the great orator, Suhumar Ari Kod, visited our college and inaugurated this journal library and computer lab in 2000. It was a big history of our department. So I am very proud of you, the new team and their efforts to bring everything together and uh, making a, organizing an international a conference in algebra and discrete mathematics. I had some shortage of time and uh, some technical issues during this talk, but still my part, I am very happy to be here with you. Thank you, thank you very much for everything you have done and you are giving to the new students. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, I have to start my <laughs> lesson. So I, it is time to leave. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best. Everything. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're Mathematics welcome. is the only place where truth and beauty means the same. My dear mathematic fellas. Before winding up, I would like to wish you all the joy and happiness of March 14th, the Pi Day. Let maths be tasteful like a pie cake in all your lives. Once again, I would like to thank everyone who gave you, uh, who supported us by your presence and effort for making this international conference a success. Tomorrow, we shall meet again using the same link at 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. Thank you all.